Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the November 7th, 2024 Northampton City Council meeting. Uh, I'm Alex Jarrett. I'm a City Council President. I'll be presiding this evening along with Vice President Rachel Maori. This meeting and all participating in person and on Zoom will be audio and video recorded. And the meeting can also be watched on Comcast Channel 15 or by streaming on Northampton Open Media's YouTube channel. Uh, I now call the City Council order. Could you call the roll, please? Sure. Councillor Dobbs. Here. Councillor Elkins. Here. Councillor Jarrett. Here. Councillor Clemmer. Here. Councillor Labarge. Yes, here. Councillor Maori. Here. Councillor Moulton. Here. Councillor Perry. Who I haven't seen. I, I believe he'll be late. Councillor Rothenberg. Here. Council President, you have a quorum. Okay, thank you. Uh, tonight's highlights include the tax classification hearing, uh, which will happen pr before public comment, and then uh, the first reading on deciding whether to maintain a unified tax rate or to split it. We have two zoning ordinances. One is introduced tonight, and it's to remove site plan review process for two family units. And another up for a vote tonight is to rezone parcels in the area of Nonatuck and Maple Street in Florence. And we have two resolutions, a resolution opposing the expansion of the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School and a resolution calling for an embargo of U.S. arms to Israel. Um, before we begin, Councillor Maori and I would like to say a few words about uh, events the last few days with the national election, and this is just us speaking for ourselves as, as council leadership. Um, I just want to acknowledge the, the pain and, and the fear that many of us are experiencing, and especially those who will be most affected by the new administration. I know the first thing that I thought when I heard the news was to go and, and reach out to people that I knew that would be, would be most effective and listen and ask what they need. And I think caring for each other uh, this time is, is really important to prioritize. And then for us um, to do what we can on a state and, and, and local level to, to protect vulnerable residents from the harms that the new administration plans. Um, and uh, I look forward to working with counselors. Thank you, Alex. Um, I'll just add that uh, I know, as Alex has said, a lot of people are scared. I'm a little scared, too. Uh, but it's our job in city government to do everything we can to be a welcoming and safe community for our residents, and we will do that. Uh, we will be there every step of the way with you. And I want you to know that I am committed to greeting people with compassion, transparency, and um, an interest in how we can stick in, uh, to the values of Northampton that have been here a long time and they're not going anywhere. And we can create the models of things that we would like to see at larger levels here together. And we need to look to the left and to the right and realize we're all that we have right now. And we're gonna get through this and we're only defeated, not if we lose, but if we quit. So I look forward to standing with you uh, the next few years and, and talking to you about how to continue on the journey that Northampton's been on for a long time to make this a beautiful community for all of us. Thank you. So the first thing on our agenda is the tax classification hearing. And um, just read the announcement of that. Um, per Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 56, the Northampton City Council will hold a public hearing on Thursday, November 7th at 6.30 p.m. here uh, to discuss the percentages of the local tax levy to be borne by each class of real and personal property in the City of Northampton for fiscal year 2025. And with us we have um, our Principal Assessor, Mark Dotrell. Welcome. Thanks. I wasn't expecting to <laughs> be going so soon, but okay. All right. Um, so, like you said, uh, we're here for the tax classification hearing. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, whether to keep the single tax rate that we've always had in Northampton, 
possibility of splitting it um, and as as always um, I think every single person here except maybe you I'm sorry what's your last name Rothenberg, Councilor Rothenberg. I think you might be the only one who's never heard this spiel before. Uh, yeah. uh, you were here last year, believe me. No, no you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I apologize. Okay, so uh, it's the uh, same thing I did. My bo boss, Jones, old boss, Joan Serafin, did it. Um, not much has changed. So um, we are here because, as you already read, Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40, Section 56, determines that City Council, along with the Mayor, will have to determine whether to keep a single tax rate or split the tax rate between the differing property classes. The Classification Act was passed in 1978. Um, requires cities and towns to classify property into four different classes, residential, commercial, industrial, and personal property. Um, residential, for those who don't know, would just, that would be single family, two family, three family homes. Um, commercial is businesses, things of that nature. Industrial properties, things like the Coca-Cola flat factory. Um, the L3 factory, and personal property is any type of property that allows you to run your business. So just point out that whether we keep a single tax rate or split the tax rate, the total tax levy will still be the same no matter what. The burden of each class of property will just be different depending on the tax rate chosen. Can you repeat that again, please? Which part? The total levy will still be the same no matter what. Uh, the burden of each class of property will just be different depending on the tax rate chosen. So, <coughs> so this shows the distribution by property class the last 10 years uh, as a percentage. Um, this year, 83.77% of the taxes, of the total valuation tax levy comes from the residential class. The other th three classes combine for the other 16.23%. Um, the commercial class this is the first year it's, oh, I'm sorry, I was about to say something incorrectly. The commercial class has been steadily declining over the last 10 years, um, partially due to the rise in residential value. Um, also, uh, the most years the commercial value, well, the last three years besides this year, the commercial values had lowered. It's up a little bit this year, which you'll see later. Um, there's a lack of large-scale commercial and industrial construction projects currently. Um, we've had a lot of residential growth, but not a lot of commercial growth. And the businesses in Northampton have been slow to recover since COVID-19. Um, the percentage split that you saw in the previous slide, the 83.77% to 16.23% is very important when um, considering whether to keep a single rate or split a rate as the Massachusetts Department of Revenue recommends a minimum split, minimum split of 70 to 30%. And total valuation, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we have the total values by classification. Um, the total values of all property this year was 5,629,106, oh, I'm sorry, which is $6,523. Again, lion's share of that comes from the residential at over $4 billion. And the, sorry, I can't, sorry, I can't remind. Is this the right slide? It's the right slide. I'm having a hard time reading from there. But commercial is 630 million, industrial 147 million, and personal property 134 million. So, in tax, in terms of tax revenue 
the percentage within the residential class has risen just over 4% this year. Um, the commercial values have gone up for the first time in two years. Uh, the industrial class grows slowly but surely, and this year the personal property value actually went down a little bit. Uh, let's see. <coughs> and when we're dealing with a tax rate, setting the tax rate, um, part of that is the new growth factor. Um, new growth is the additional tax revenue generated by new construction, renovations, and other growth in the property tax base during a calendar year. Um, it does not include value increases due to market value um, or market forces. The new growth this year was collected between July 1st, 23 and July 1st of 2024. Um, we had $38,952,620 million, $38 million in residential growth, $26,434,917 million combined from commercial, industrial, and personal property. Um, overall, that ended up in tax revenue, $993,237. Excuse me. <clears throat> so when we're trying to figure out the tax rate, we take the levy limit, which is figured by taking the previous year's tax levy, adding 2.5%, and then the new growth. And that figure helps is how we determine the tax rate. I would have to have all of that in front of me to do it. But Snarty also helps with that. <laughs> So the levy limit for FY25 was 78425538 and the levy used was 78413509 and I'm sorry you're going to have to talk about the debt exclusion cuz I'm not sure exactly how to talk about that. Good. So on the slide, you'll see also the debt exclusion of $568,220. That is for um, the police station. Um, so out of, uh, out of the tax rate, that equals 10, per, uh, 10 cents on our tax rate for the debt exclusion. And the last payment is 2032, which is, means it'll fall off the tax levy. So um, one thing that you're going to be focusing on is the factor of one or a factor of less than one or a factor of great, greater than one. Um, factor of one essentially means you settle for a single tax rate. Factor of less than one means you split the tax rate and that this would increase the tax burden on commercial, industrial, and personal property. Um, conversely, it's very rare, but if you go with a factor of greater than one, you would reduce the share of the commercial, industrial, and personal property and raise the residential rate. I think only four, maybe no, seven communities have that. So. We have the tax rate comparisons of local towns and cities, and these are mostly, I believe these are actually all in Hampshire County on slide 13. Yeah. So we have an example of last year's tax rates since the fiscal 25 tax rates for most of the other cities and towns in this area have not been finalized. Um, in terms of residential tax rate, we're about in the middle locally, but in all of Western Massachusetts, we're in the bottom one third. Uh, as far as commercial tax rates go, we're the lowest of the examples, and also in very much in the bottom one third of commercial tax rates in Western Massachusetts. Um, so if a single tax rate 
is decided on or the factor of one, then the tax rate for fiscal 25 will be $13.93 per thousand. Last year it was $15.19 per thousand, the year before $15.84, and the year before that was $17.89. So that is an 8.3% decrease in the tax rate. Um, if we split the tax rate and decided to go with a factor of less than one, the tax rate would be $12.58 for residential properties and $20.90 for commercial, industrial, and personal property. So now, the average tax, so the average assessment um, went up from $477,000 for a single family home to $536,905 which is in a which is a rise of about 12 and a half percent with a single tax rate um, since it's lowered your tax the average tax bill is not going to go up 12 and a half percent the average tax bill would go up a little over three percent due to the lowering of the tax rate um, if the split rate was decided on it would go down to 1258 uh, which is a difference of 725 dollars um, now, if you split the rate, though, the, uh, the commercial property, the average tax bill on the average commercial property would go up from $10,420 to $15,634, and on the industrial side of things, it would go from $13,726 up to $20,593, so it would put significant burden on the commercial classes. And so we have a slide showing um, what the, so, so these are the single family, the condos, the two family, the three family, and the apartments, all the commercial, I'm sorry, are the residential class average values from fiscal 24 to fiscal 25 it, with an example of what the average tax bill would be with a single tax rate. Um, I did not put the commercial and the industrial, but the average commercial bill, I'm sorry, average commercial assessment last year was 652 40, 433 and it's going up to $748,051. And, $748, and the average industrial bill is going up from $879,908 to 985325 And so two thirds of the communities in Massachusetts are single rate communities. Approximately one third are split tax rate communities. Um, as I stated before, the usual split rate community has a minimum 70 30 split in residential and commercial properties. Um, and most of that 30% of commercial industrial property is heavily industrial or have large, very large businesses like malls um, that are hard to move. Um, of course, malls are also, you'll get Hadley, the mall in Hadley, the mall in Holyoke, they are having a lot of trouble keeping businesses in there. Uh, so, yeah. So, oops. Oh, sorry. So, overall, I recommend a single rate over a split rate. I don't have a vote on it, I don't have an actual say, but that is my recommendation. Any, any questions? <laughs> Councilor Labarge, you. your microphone. Okay, so I heard some of the figures on it and so forth, but I've been dealing with this for many years. Mm -hmm. And the question I have is, which we hear just like last time 
about splitting it. And I'm hearing again now from our assessor for quite a while with every assessor of the situation that the splitting could cause a serious problem here in our city or any city, and it has happened in some other cities. When you go into a single, it is very difficult to go ahead and come back and connect with commercial and residential. Is that correct? That is correct, yeah. It's, um, it's so I, I do want to point out that I don't think splitting a tax rate in and of itself is bad. I just think in the type of city that Northampton is, we don't have the industrial base, we don't have the infrastructure designed for a split tax rate. And yes, give it if you were to experiment with a split tax rate, and if it went wrong, which you know it very right. very well could cause a lot of small businesses to close. I mean, Northampton is primarily made of small businesses. Um, if you wanted to experiment, it, but then you wanted to decide to go back to a single tax rate, it is hard to go back to a single rate specifically because you've given a good number of people, you've given a whole class, the, by far the largest class in the city, a tax break, and now you're taking that tax break away. So hearing it again, and knowing with the COVID and that, many, many businesses we lost in our city and many other cities. And now we're starting to get construction mm -hmm. work in the city. And, and that's serious here, of bringing back people working. Construction, you can see it coming on Pleasant Street. It's happening, it's happening. To me, I would not want to go ahead and say, take away commercial from residential. I think we need to say and stay the same we are because it's going to benefit us instead of hearing again about how it would hurt businesses. They have been hurt terribly with, through the COVID. Some have left, some have gone to East Stampton, and now we need to go ahead and protect the businesses we have here and also get the workers back out with construction to make our city vibrant again because it's going to be taking a long time to get back on our feet. That's my feelings. So I, I could not even go in that direction of splitting it. I think we should stay the way we have been and we need to look at this very, very seriously. Um, so I'd like us to, st we will have an opportunity to deliberate later in the meeting and yeah. in two weeks. So if we could stick to questions that we yeah, have for the public hearing, that's, yes. be good. are there any other counselors who have questions? Councilor Moulton. <coughs> Thanks for that presentation. Um, the average uh, valuation of, I believe it was single family homes was up by about 12 and a half percent. That's correct. 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 How does that compare to the last several years last year uh, it's almost the exact same as last year it went up approximately 13 percent last year and the year before it went up 25 percent in the single families mm -hmm. so it's significantly down from two years ago slightly down from from last year. yes but that is still uh, when I first my first four years here when I was the assistant assessor it was considered um, it was considered high, very high, if the changes hit 10%. So it's still rising very high, just not the astronomical numbers from two, three years ago, three, four years ago. So. Thanks. Okay, any other questions from counselors? Okay, we'll open it up to members of the public. This is specifically for the tax classification hearing. So it is only for questions or comments related to the tax classification. Um, but if, if there's anyone in the room who would like to speak specifically to this issue or on Zoom, uh, you can raise your hand. Come on up. And your name and city or town to start. Yes, hi, my name is uh, Nick Modern. I live at 16 Strong Avenue in Northampton. 
And I was curious about whether um, multinational corporations like uh, L3 Harris happens to be a wep weapons maker and right now uh, making money hand over fist um, and has been, uh, are they subject to a different tax rate than a commercial tax rate like uh, Anna Bandera Cafe where they sell coffee and, uh, you know, or, or, or some other place uh, familiars uh, where wages are really low, you know, and uh, they're trying to get by. So I, I, it seems to me that re really that the company's kind of colonized Northampton and uh, come in here and, and do things that a lot of people don't approve of in the first place and also get the benefit of the same rate that people who are just struggling by and, and, are, and are not a uh, multinational, international corporation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you we'll take all. We'll take all comments and questions, and then we'll we'll come back and, oh, okay. and address them. Mm -hmm. right. are there any other uh, are there any other members of the public who want to speak specifically to the tax classification? Your name and city or town to start. Uh, Indy Francis. I live in West Hampton, but I work in North Hampton. Um, similarly, I'm wondering if um, if there's a reason why residential is so separate from commercial, industrial, and personal, and why we couldn't do a unique division of the tax levels so that, for example, industrial alone uh, could be separated and then commercial and personal could be kept together along with residential. I'm just curious if there's a if there's a precedent for that sort of reorganization of the tax. Um, brackets, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Okay, seeing none, um, <clears throat> will uh, would you be able to speak to those questions that were raised? Um, as far as the, uh, as I heard, you know, uh, the uh, our cat our companies such as L3 Harris in a different category from companies that are like cafes? And is there, do we have the, the ability to, uh, to change these in any further way? It's against the law to do that. Uh, that is the, uh, the big problem with splitting a tax rate, in a, in, in, at least in a city like ours. Um, you're gonna, if you split the tax rate and raise the commercial tax rate, um, you are going to be raising it on every single commercial property. It, you, you can't choose whether it's a very large factory or a mom and pop store. There's no, cho there's no way of doing that. And then I think the other question was in terms of the other three categories, commercial, industrial, and personal property, can you adjust within those, or is it just residential on one side and the other three on the other? There is no town or city that does that, but I don't know if it's against the law to do that. I would have to go and look that up. Uh, but there, I know that there is no town that Every town that has a split rate, it's residential has one, and then commercial, industrial, personal property have another one. Mm -hmm. I can certainly um, go try to look that up um, either tomorrow or before before the 21st. Yeah, it would be useful to sure. know before the 21st. For sure. There's no law. <laughs> um, I didn't think so. so. Uh, counselors, any last questions? For the assessor. Okay. Um, well, I, I didn't. We didn't open the public hearing. This <laughs> <laughs> uh, is all a fiction. Uh, yeah, it, I, I, it they, effectively opened. it's effectively open. <laughs> but we do need to vote to close the public hearing. So I would entertain a motion. Move to close the hearing. Second. Motion made by Councillor Elkins and seconded by Councillor Moulton to close the public hearing. Uh, is, are there, is there any discussion? Okay, a roll call. Actually, uh, is Councillor Perry here? 
Okay, um, all in favor of closing the public hearing, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Okay, the public hearing is now closed. We will take up this issue later in the meeting uh, under financial orders. Okay, that brings us to public comment. And um, so if you wish to make a public comment, you can sign up on the sheet at the podium. And if you're on Zoom, you use the raise hand feature. And the raise hand feature is in the bottom menu bar. You click on react and then raise hand. Uh, if you're calling in by phone, you can raise your hand by hitting star 9. If you're having trouble on Zoom raising your virtual hand, you can turn on your video and physically raise your hand. If you want to submit a written public comment, you can email it to citycouncil at northamptonma.gov. It will be sent to all counselors and will be part of the public record. I'm going to alternate between people in the room and people on Zoom. And before you begin, state your name and your city or town for the public record. To ensure everyone has an equal opportunity to speak, the council limits comments to a maximum of two minutes. And after two minutes, um, I'll ask you to please finish your sentence. If someone has already said something you agree with, feel free to second their thought. You don't have to use the entire two minutes, and that would allow more people to speak, as there is a maximum time limit of 90 minutes. Uh, according to the council rules, we do not respond during public comment. It's your time to speak. And our rules also state that counselors and members of the public uh, shall conduct themselves with civility and respect at all times. Your protected speech is a constitutional right, one that we ask you to wield with consideration and respect for all, with recognition that the public space that grants you that freedom is shared equally by everyone. You can speak on any topic. It doesn't need to be an item on the agenda. And all comments are to be directed to the council. Uh, we do have members here of the council with uh, hearing accessibility concerns. So if you don't have the floor, um, please use motions rather than sounds when others are speaking. And please don't interrupt uh, while others are speaking. Um, we will go first to, uh, in the room, Jim Winston. Welcome. Your name and city or town. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jim Winston, uh, Ward 2 Northampton. I'm asking you not to pass the proposed resolution calling for an embargo on U.S. arms to Israel. While everyone wants to see peace in the Middle East, including Gaza, the resolution is simply misguided. To start with, in all due respect to the city councilors, we elected you to act on affairs in Northampton, the schools, the DPW, the Northampton Police Department, not for complicated foreign policy matters. There's a venue for that. It's Congress, the Senate, um, not the City Council. And what, very noticeably, what's missing with the proposed resolution is some critical items of fact. Whereas, number one, on October 7th, 2023, and every single day afterwards, Hamas has fired and continues to fire, to this day, missiles into Israel. Number two, on October 7, 2023, Hamas brutally attacked multiple kibbutzes in Israel, murdering over 1,200 Israeli innocent Israeli citizens, including men, women, and children. They also murdered 364 teenagers and college kids at a music festival that day. Number three, on October 7, 2023, and other days after that, Hamas savagely raped scores of Israeli women. Number four, on October 7, 2023, Hamas kidnapped 250 hostages. While well, Hamas has already murdered many of them, there are some that are still alive, including some American citizens. Five, Hamas's attacks are funded and fueled in part by Iran, which is 72 times larger than the state of Israel. Hamas is also funded by U.S. dollars that's meant to go for food and medicine for the Palestinians, and needed for the Palestinians, but instead intercepted by Hamas to fund rockets and secret underground tunnels. Six, whereas the city council urges, this is what should be, is, is urges the immediate release of all hostages as well as the end of rockets being fired into Israel on a daily basis. The proposed resolution has none of that language and as a result shouldn't go forward. I urge you instead not to go forward with this. Focus on the issues in the city. We have some serious, significant issues including the layoff of many, many key uh, personnel. You can finish your sentence. Yeah, many key personnel in the city school department 
that, with all due respect, that's where I would ask you to direct your attention. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, next on Zoom, Layla. Oh, hello. Um, I am a Palestinian American uh, business owner in Northampton. Uh, I'd like to urge you to vote in favor of the arms embargo resolution because for over a year I've watched my tax dollars be used to bomb people I care about in Palestine and Lebanon. Uh, some of the material weapons for which are made in Northampton. Um, Northampton overwhelmingly passed a resolution demanding adherence to the Leahy Law, which, quote, withhold U.S. weapon sales to Israel, sales that now make us accomplices to the present mass slaughter of innocents. Since then, the Palestinian death toll has, toll has risen to an estimated 200,000 people, according to The Lancet, with many more wounded, starving, unaccounted for. This year alone, the U.S. has sent over $18 billion to fund Israel's genocide of the Palestinian people and its escalation to Lebanon, Syria, Yemen, Iran, spending our tax dollars to line the pockets of weapons manufacturers and the weapons industry tax interfering in our elections. This is despite the ICJ ruling that Israel is plausibly committing genocide, 15 countries bringing this case this month to the ICJ, despite the ICC's request for an arrest warrant for Netanyahu and Golan, despite the ICJ advisory opinion that Israel's occupation of the West Bank before October 7th violates the prohibition on racial segregation and apartheid. There is ample daily evidence that Israel is violating the laws that would bar them from receiving any US military funding. Counselors, Today you spoke to our values and safety and our shared responsibility. We are currently sending our money, money that is sorely needed in our community, to fund genocide and to communicate to the world that we do not value the lives of people like me, that the laws in place to protect human rights do not apply to Palestinians. This is extremely dangerous locally here. So to me, this is a local issue. This month, our state reps have an opportunity to join Bernie Sanders' resolution of disapproval to block an additional $20 billion in unconditioned arms sales to Israel. This is the time. We must leverage our local power. That's time. That's time. If you could finish your sentence. To demand they represent our will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next in the room, Jennifer Scarlett. Yes, uh, no, Jennifer Scarlett. I, Jennifer asked if I would go and take her place, and she'll okay. uh, speak in the place I was in. Okay, I see where that is. Thank you. Um, my name is Nick Modern. I live at 16 Strong Avenue in Northampton. Um, first, I want to say that I'm very grateful to Councilperson Dubbs for having the courage to submit this arms embargo resolution, and I am grateful to you, the City Council, for considering it for a vote. That doesn't happen in, in, uh, in every community. And on this level, we're, we're at the grassroots where we can be heard and make change and, and not have uh, huge amounts of money uh, destroy any sense of democracy that we have. The Dubs resolution has two parts. In the first part, the Council calls on our members of Congress to support Bernie Sanders' congressional resolution of disapproval for shipping certain weapons to Israel. But not all weapons for Israel are covered by that resolution. The second part of the Dubs resolution responds to this shortcoming in the Sanders resolution. The second part calls on our members of Congress to introduce new legislation imposing an embargo on all weapons to Israel. Tonight, there may be a proposal to water down this second part of the Dubs resolution by adding one word to it, and that word is inserting, or inserting the word unrestricted to describe the category of weapons that should be embargoed. This, of course, leaves room for other weapons that are not in this category and that would continue to be shipped. In fact, there is no clear definition of unrestricted weapons. This insertion of the word into any legislation only leads down a dead-end siding of endless bureaucratic wrangling while the killing rolls on. And what might have been considered 
defensive weapons earlier this year are now only enabling an expanding slaughter of Palestinians. That's time, if you could finish your sentence. Yes. Massive Israeli bombardment of Lebanese and increasing bombing of Syrians. Thank you. Uh, I just want to add one more sentence. Uh, that's, that's, that's your time. I have, we have to be strict about that to Thank make you. sure everyone has equal time. Okay. Uh, next on Zoom is Ruthie Woodring. Your name and city or town, please. Uh, I'm Ruthie Woodring, and I live in Florence. And um, I was reading the book recently. It's a uh, Starry Messenger. Uh, what is it? Uh, I forget what the end of the title is. Anyway, it's by Neil deGrasse Tyson. And the thing in that book that struck me the most was where he says that from space, during the day, you, you can't see political boundaries except for in one place, and that's the Israeli-Palestine border. Um, Israel is so much greener, and Palestine is, is brown. This book was written in 2022, and that just struck me, and um, I want to thank the city councilors for supporting the resolution to um, not send more weapons to Israel. Um, I read that uh, the United States has sent $158 billion worth of weapons over the years to Israel. And we could use that money in Northampton, so this is a local issue too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in the room, Abby Fraser. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Abby, and I live in Springfield. Um, first, I just want to say I agree with everything that Nick Modern just said. Um, and second, I am a volunteer youth worker and spend a lot of my time with high school students. Over the past year, I have heard them ask over and over and over and over again, why will not the adults in my life be honest? Why is this not ending? How does nobody in power try to stop this with all the information they have? Um, this is not a time for compromise, and it's not a time for watered-down language. The U.S. needs an arms embargo resolution now, and it needs to be on all weapons, no matter their classification. It matters to students here, and it matters infinitely more to the people of Palestine, Lebanon, and Yemen. End the genocide, arms embargo now, no compromise. I urge you to pass the resolution this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on Zoom, Deborah. Deborah, your name and city or town, please. Sure. Hi, I'm Deborah Rosenstein. I live in South Deerfield. Um, Want to echo what folks have said about thanking the counselors for introducing this. Um, and I appreciate your offer to say we agree with people and go quicker so other folks have a chance to speak. So I'll just say that um, I agree with everything that Leila Mushabad um, mentioned in terms of um, what the U.S. has been doing going against our own U.S. law and against international law. Um, mainly what I want to say, though, is that um, growing up Jewish, I was never obsessed really as a child with who the Nazis were. I was really focused on who, um, who, the, who the standard buys were, who the people on the sidelines were. And I feel like with this genocide for the past year, I have had that experience myself of what it is to be that. And I want to just mention that, I think I'm freezing here, so I'm going to turn my video off. But um, I want to just mention that for anyone who might say, you know, what does this have to do with Northampton or with our area, Jim McGovern um, is watching very closely um, what constituents, his mm -hmm. constituents, and he might actually introduce arms embargo legislation. That's his leadership, that'll be his decision. But he's watching what we're all doing. And so this is not symbolic. This makes, this is a big deal, just like when Northampton passed the, um, the resolution for a ceasefire. And it's critical, actually, for us in this moment, 
because the JRDs have been introduced in the Senate and because there's some movement about having arms embargo legislation, we in Northampton and some other communities that are passing the same thing in their cities and municipalities could actually have a huge influence here. Um, and then I just want to say that we don't have to choose. There was a speaker who talked about the importance of um, getting behind workers who have been laid off in the city and like, yeah, we have to do that too. And that's saying. So thank you again. And please pass this arms embargo um, for all levels. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Ben Stegbaker. Did I get that right? Your name and city or town, please. Hello, my name is Ben, uh, also from Springfield. Thank you all for hearing this resolution. I want to echo everything that's already been said by Nick, Abby, and people on Zoom. I just want to say that the past 13 months have been incredibly apocalyptic in many sense of the word. The ongoing and escalating genocide against the Palestinian and Lebanese people has revealed our society's values and morals again in new and disturbing ways. It has yet again revealed that our country has an economic dependence and reliance on war and the weapons industry, and our, our quote unquote liberal democracy is built upon these realities, and they exist here in our backyard at the L3 Harris factory. I urge you all to vote for a complete and total arms embargo resolution. I urge you to pass this resolution. We need to stop we sending weapons to Israel and partnering with them in this ongoing genocide. It simply must stop and we can no longer go on like this. For how much longer can we afford to support genocide and call ourselves a quote unquote liberal democracy? I urge you to pass the arms embargo resolution with no compromises or dilutions. Thank you. Thank you. Next on Zoom, Fergus Marshall. Name and city or town, please. Hello, yes. <coughs> um, hello, my name is Fergus Marshall, and I am in Chicopee. And I want to thank the North Carolina City Council for this time to participate. Uh, I would like to speak in favor of the resolution of an arms embargo of the Israeli regime, and to be clear, an arms embargo on all weapons, offensive and defensive, I'm speaking tonight coming from the experiences of being subscripted into the U.S. Army in 1969 as an infantry soldier. The horrors of that experience can never be overstated as there is no video game or movie or documentary that can even come close to showing the true devastation and bloodshed. I have been closely following the news since last October and know by the hundreds of reports from people on the ground this is just not any ordinary traditional war between two armies, but a true genocide targeting, targeting citizens involving, including women, children, and elders. From the evidence I have collected, I have concluded that the Israeli regime is intent on eliminating everyone in Palestine. My government, when sending me to Vietnam, lied to me and the American people and used every opportunity to cover up atrocities that were committed and have lied ever since, including the atrocities being committed today in Palestine. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to have to use such strong language, but that is what it is. Right now, my government, our government, is breaking the law, the Leahy Amendment, which bars arms shipments to countries that violate international law regarding the killing of civilians. We we do not oppose, if we do not oppose this horror, who are we as human beings? When we know what's going on and we know right from wrong, what do we do? That was time if you could finish your sentence. Now it's a matter of life and death, so please support this resolution as if our own lives depend on it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, next in the room is Thea. Is it Yanith or Panith? I'm Thea Panith from Northampton. I strongly support the resolution before you, which would send a letter to our delegation asking them to work for an arms embargo of U.S. weapons shipments to Israel. This is a continuing, expanding 
war with horrific bombing of civilians. Tens of thousands, likely more, have been killed and wounded, and crucial aid is being withheld. People are starving to death. War crimes are being committed with U.S. weapons, and we are all implicated because we pay for those weapons with our tax dollars. A resolution of this kind helps to build up opposition to weapons going from the U.S. to Israel that rain down the devastating death and destruction. Decades ago, Father Daniel Berrigan spoke these words at the Catonsville Nine trial following the burning of draft records during another criminal war. He said, our hearts give us no rest for thinking of the land of burning children. Please think of the land of burning children in Gaza as you cast your votes. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Uh, next on Zoom is Jesse. Uh, Jesse, your name and city or town, please. Hi, yes, my name is Jesse Lawrence. I live on Lincoln Avenue in Northampton. Um, and I am here today to express my gratitude um, to the council for introducing this resolution and to speak in support of passing the resolution. Um, I am not okay and continue to not be okay with my tax dollars being used to fund a genocide. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm very grateful that there is an opportunity for this to uh, not be the case anymore, to, to be accurately represented by my representatives uh, and by the use of my tax dollars. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next in the room, Ahmad Esfahan. Your name and city or town, please. Uh, yes. Uh, hello, my name is Ahmad Esfahani. Uh, I live in Greenfield. Um, I also serve as chair of the Greenfield Board of Health. Um, this summer, I was actually also a delegate to the Re Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. Um, and. I'm in support of this resolution, um, and to be brief, everything that needs to be said um, has been said. Um, there's genocide happening, and Northampton and the rest of Massachusetts needs to take a stand that humanity is more important than money. Thank you. Thank you. Next on Zoom, Kobe Leff. Name and city or town, please. strong support of this resolution and I'm very thankful to the Council of Dubs for bringing it forward. Um, I urge you all to not only pass it but to keep the existing language so as others have said um, it bars all weapon sales to Israel um, without limitation. Um, I am Jewish. My grandfather uh, when he was a little younger than me participated in the so-called War of Independence in Israel and left after a year and never went back because he realized then in 1948 that it was a genocidal white nationalist project. Um, and so that's the values I've grown up with. It's been very disturbing to me over this last year to hear speaking out for peace um, as labeled as anti-Semitic when I'm not hearing the same voices condemn some of the real anti-Semitism we've seen from Trump and his allies. Um, this is a scary week for a lot of us, even though, you know, the, the horrors have been going on in so many ways, um, regardless of who is elected to national U.S. office. Um, and so, you know, to the point of what do we as a local municipality have to do with national politics, I think many of us are seeing the difficulties of passing things at the national level, the way, um, uh, blood-loving uh, um, powers have created immunity and put up um, walls to higher offices making real change, and so it's up to us to start the charge from the ground. Mm -hmm. As some of us feel despair and wonder what do we do now that you know Trump is back in office, now that fascism is re-empowered, we ask, you know, what do we do about climate change? I don't know, but a good first step is stopping the genocide in Gaza, where Israel's bombs with U.S. tax dollars 
um, create the emissions of uh, 20 times a uh, standard uh, uh, this year. Time, if you could finish your sentence. And when we ask what um, we can do to protect women, a great place to start is by um, stopping the indiscriminate slaughter of them in the Middle East. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Next, the Peter Caicos. Hello, Peter Caicos, uh, Ward 4 and Northampton. This is regarding the uh, embargo resolution, and uh, I want to thank all the p speakers who have uh, preceded me. They have been, in many ways, more articulate than I could ever have been, and so I'm thankful to them, and also thankful to our my counselor, uh, Jeremy Dubbs, for uh, sponsoring this resolution. Why is it, why do we need this now? If you read the papers a few weeks ago, the Israeli government has banned UNRWA from bringing in food, medicine, supplies, water, all that's needed for basic necessities of life. This means, friends, that as we sit here in the comfort of our city council chambers, children, elderly, women, children who need amputations are dying as we speak. God only knows the numbers. The Israeli government has hidden them from our eyes. They've covered them up, not allowing anyone to investigate what's really going on in Gaza, except those that they officially endorse and are highly regulated. Ralph Nader has said that by the end of the year, the estimates are, reasonable estimates are, one million will be dead. The only way you and I can stop this is by signing up and imploring our government to pass Sandra's joint resolution, enabling, enabling us to stop the weapons so that Israel will be forced to comply with the courts of law throughout the world, which says that they are an implausible uh, situation of genocide. My last sentence is that to go <coughs> to do nothing and to go on with the genocide unchecked is to be an accomplice, wittingly or not. Thank you. Next on Zoom, Aspen. Your name and city or town, please. Hi, yes, my name is Aspen. I live in Phaetonville, Massachusetts, um, and I operate a business that serves many of the people who live in Northampton. Um, it's a small floristry business, floral farm. Um, and two and a half weeks ago, I woke to the news that my friend Yosef Abdurabi was martyred in a targeted drone attack. I have no way of knowing if the weapons that killed him were manufactured by L3 Harris, a weapons manufacturer in our backyard in Northampton, but I do know that they manufacture weapons, including drones, bombs, and surveillance tech that the IOF uses in Gaza to slaughter people just like him. So I urge you strongly to pass this resolution and I also um, urge you to uh, support the loophole that um, Nick Modern spoke to in that I believe that we should remove that language. I think it is not useful and that um, all weapons are <laughs> weapons of mass murder. Northampton um, identifies itself as a peace city and I don't think that there is anything peaceful about having a weapons manufacturer in our city. Mm -hmm. So I also urge you to please end their operational permit. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, next in the room, Marie. Your 
name and city or town, please. Um, my name is Marie de Senival. I live in Worthington um, uh, with my spouse, Harriet, who is Jewish. Um, I became a U.S. citizen in October last year, so not long ago, uh, three weeks after the start of the genocide. In November, so three weeks later, I joined Jewish Voice for Peace. For the last 14 years, I have worked in the USA as a public health, human rights, and gender expert. For the US government, mostly. Uh, I have supported USAID programs in Haiti, in Colombia, in Nigeria, in Lebanon, and many other countries. When our bombs fall on Beirut, I think of a few persons I know there. One of my friends there lost her entire family two weeks ago under our bombs. This genocide is very real to me. So for me, this resolution is a matter that is important to everybody, local or global. Today, a dear friend of mine, who is now the director of Doctors Without Borders, asked me how I was doing considering recent events that we mentioned earlier. And I told her I was trying to keep my sanity and keep faith in humanity. Come here to testify today is a gesture of faith, and I thank you to allow me for this opportunity. Allow me also, please, to read the text that she sent me this morning. <coughs> so, quote, our teams in Gaza, 13 internationals, 600 Palestinians, are huddled in al Mawasi area an increasingly small handkerchief in the north in the process of being annihilated with options for evacuation that are only a trompe l'oeil version of the game of ethnic cleansing called the suitcase or the coffin. Only no one can leave. That's your time. Could you finish your sentence? I'm sorry, I, 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 need to, I need to tell you what she said. I, uh, we, do have to, we do have to stop it just because we need to be fair to everyone. It is chaos, so. anarchy, bombings, tortures of doctors, and children who go crazy. Almost nothing comes in, etc. It so makes that, me sick. That I do have to cut you we off. Vote there. for I'm the sorry. strongest, strongest so we result. We have to let, uh, be, have equal treatment for everyone. Thank you. This is not business as usual. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on Zoom, Jay Andrew. Or Jay Andrew. Are you able to unmute? There we go. Yeah. Is this working? Here it is. Welcome. You your name and city or town, please. All right. I'm Jay Andrew World. I live right here in Northampton. Um, I want to thank uh, the council for actually, uh, you know, bringing this vote to to uh, to here um, for us to speak about it. I want to thank Jeremy for for sponsoring it. Uh, I really do appreciate the fact that you know we have so little power at times as in a representative democracy like we are in that it is nice to actually uh, put our voice uh, out here uh, this way. Um, I want to uh, quote Michael Brooks, uh, somebody who I've actually, uh, you know. Uh, worked with before he passed away, who uh, honestly, this world is a much sadder place without him. But uh, he said before he, he uh, uh, went to 2020, this is not a complex issue. There is one group that has enormous power and is the most powerful in the Middle East is backed up by the United States. And it acts with total impunity and is never held accountable for anything. And there's so much, uh, that there is no symmetry in the relationship, period. Uh, which, you know, is is uh, uh, you know. I wish I wish we had more uh, voices like that. Uh, yeah, but uh, to, to um, I, I just feel that uh, we should at least honor uh, international law by uh, using uh, whatever power we have to end this war. And I think that uh, controlling the flow of weapons is the only way to make Israel do the right thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can we open a window in here? It's so hot. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Pause a minute while people. Yeah. I think 
think it's cool outside though. <laughs> Great. Um, James, is it scales? The one right, she's right after. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is James Scales, uh, resident of Northampton, Ward 3. Um, I would like to speak in support of everyone that has spoken uh, in support of the resolution. Um, there have been, everybody's comments have been really wonderful. Um, I wanted to make a brief comment uh, thinking about section four. So there's an article I created, title I created the Leahy Act, it should be applied to Israel. Uh, Patrick Leahy notes that the lot has never been used against Israel despite repeated credible reports of gross violations. Um, I wanted to mention just three brief examples of these violations. Uh, from Haaretz in August, Israeli army uses Palestinian civilians to inspect potentially booby-trapped tunnels in Gaza. Gazans not suspected of, cra of terrorism are detained and sent as human shields to search tunnels and houses. Uh, from ProPublica in September, the U.S. government's two foremost authorities on humanitarian assistance, U.S. aid, and the State Department's Refugee Bureau, uh, both concluded in the spring that Israel has deliberately blocked deliveries of food and medicine into Gaza and that weapons sh sales should be halted. Uh, Blinken, by the way, ignored these memos and lied to Congress about their conclusions. <clears throat> And from The Guardian two days ago, IDF uh, Brigadier General Itzhak Cohen told Israeli reporters that, quote, there is no intention of allowing the residents of the northern Gaza Strip to return to their homes. Um, end quote, humanitarian aid, he said, will no longer be allowed into the north as there are no civilians left. The term for removing a people under threat of mass starvation and at will execution is ethnic cleansing. As taxpayers, we refuse complicity in supplying weapons to a military that actively violates human rights. And as human beings, we have a practical and moral imperative to demand an end to genocide. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on Zoom is Anya. Your name and city or town, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Anya. I currently live in New Salem but I was born and raised in Northampton, family still lives there. I've lived in the Valley for 28 out of my 33 years, and I help op operate an organization based out of Northampton. Um, I wanna echo what a lot of people have said already in support of this uh, arms embargo resolution without any loopholes. Um, and I wanna just, you know, big things, are made up of many, many small things. Bombs are made up of many small parts. Big change is made up of many small actions. And, you know, growing up in Northampton, touting itself as a very progressive town, uh, I want to make sure that I do what I can and that our city councilors do what we can to bring about every small change possible so that we can help make big change happen, how history happens. Uh, I also want to. You know, thinking of this, I also think of my Nitmuk friends out here in the North Quabbin region and their, what their ancestors experienced. I think of the Nantuck people and the Pakumtuk people who had to flee uh, many up north and experience a genocide of their own and where Northampton is literally based on and that these are, you know, can, these are actions that are happening in real time that we have a small a window to, um, be responsible for, or at least acknowledge and take accountability and uh, stop any small uh, portion of participation that we can. So I want to thank everyone for bringing this up and please, please support a complete and unconditional arms embargo now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Jennifer Scarlett. Good evening, my name is Jennifer Scarlett. I live in Northampton. 
I urge you uh, in the strongest possible terms to adopt the arms embargo resolution as originally written with no weakening language. A CBS poll shows that 61% of Americans support an arms embargo, 77% of Democrats and 40% of Republicans. But I want to share a little of the human side of the horrors in Gaza. It is the reason we are here. It is the reason that five Americans have burned themselves to death trying to stop the carnage. In the past month, Israel's collective punishment of the people of Gaza has reached new extremes in the north. It is now a literal extermination campaign. Hundreds of thousands have been ordered to evacuate. Families have been separated. Men and boys disappeared. Those who choose to remain have now been named combatant terrorists by the IDF. A couple weeks ago, an American doctor who volunteered at Kamal Adwan Hospital described on Democracy Now! the horrific conditions inside the hospital. He described oceans of blood. He described starving dogs eating corpses. A CNN story recounting the trauma of IDF soldiers quoted a bulldozer driver who testified before the Knesset. Mm. The soldier said, we saw very, very difficult things, things that are difficult to accept. On many occasions, soldiers had to run over people, dead and alive, in the hundreds. Everything squirts out. When you see a lot of meat outside and blood, he said, referring to bodies as meat, then it really affects you when you, when you eat. I can't eat meat anymore. How can there be any doubt what possible justification could be there be in this room for continuing to ship any weapons to Israel? Hamas and Hezbollah have said that the moment Israel agrees to a permanent ceasefire, they too will cease firing. Northampton City Council, please vote for a clear, simple, full, and immediate arms embargo resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on Zoom is Rebecca White. Name and city or town? Hey there. Um, my name is Rebecca White. I live on Pleasant Street in Northampton. Um, I am Jewish, and I just want to echo what has been said by so many here tonight, uh, including Leila Mushabek, Deborah Rosenstein, Fergus, Fergus Marshall, and others. Uh, please pass this resolution with undiluted language. Free Palestine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Deb Yaffe. Good evening. My name is Deborah Yaffe. I'm from South Deerfield, and thank you for bringing up this resolution. Um, I agree with everything that people have said. You know, part of why we're here, part of why I'm here, is just the frustration of witnessing a genocide in my lifetime. And as a Jewish retired therapist, to have it be, um, you know, committed in the name of my safety. You know, when we're talking about defending Israel, re Israel's right to defend, this is not it. This, this state is not representative of what I know. Um, as you know to be jewish it has nothing to do with me as a jew so i'm urging you to pass this resolution in its entirety um the other thing that i would say is you know as humanitarians we've been talking a lot about how we care about women and children but we're watching uh, 70 percent of the murders in gaza are women and children and so there's a connection there you know, do we really care about women and children? We can stop this. They're being denied um, health care, intentionally starved. So as you know, we're breaking our own laws. And so you have a chance to really set a line to stand up for humanity, which is so important right now. You spoke about that in the beginning of the meeting, about how we need to come together as a community. Well, this, this is it. We're coming together as a community. And it is a local issue. It's, a, it's affecting all of us. So I urge you to pass the resolution. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next on Zoom, Charlotte Kaling. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Charlotte. I live in Northampton. Um, I also wanted to speak tonight in favor of 
the um, arms embargo resolution on the table um, and just express my support for what others have said tonight. Um, particularly, I just wanted to highlight what Kobe said about the importance of working at our local levels um, to fight for our values in any way we can um, because of our lack of opportunity, near lack of opportunity to fight for our values um, at any sort of national level. It feels really nice to be able to communicate at least in our own communities and try to fight for uh, what is right and what we believe in. Um, and I also wanted to highlight again Anya's comment um, about taking action when we're witnessing an active genocide in any way that we can. Um, and I think it would be, it is necessary for the Northampton City Council to um, vote in favor of this. Um, and thank you for bringing it forward. And I agree with what everyone has said about it remaining um, undiluted. And I don't need to harp on about why it's important because I think we should all know that at this point this point. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, in the room, Maha Mushabek. Hi, counselors. I'm my name is Maha Mushabek. Um, I live on Straw Avenue in Northampton. Uh, I'm Palestinian American uh, with two children in preschool in this town. I also run a business in Northampton. And I'm also here to just echo the voices um, and urge you to vote in favor of the resolution for an arms embargo to Israel. Um, I want to second um, my sister's words, Leila Mushabek, since she said a lot of what I would like to say more eloquently than I could say it myself, as well as so many others here tonight. Um, but I did want to particularly reinforce that um, Northampton has a responsibility to pass this resolution. We're a town that protects and speaks for our most marginalized community members. Um, Councillor, you spoke to this at the beginning. Um, it's especially at a time when so many of, so many marginalized peoples in this country are under grave threat. Uh, I received a lot of those messages and calls. You said that you made, Councillor Jarrett, uh, we've, we've been holding our family members and our friends close at this time because we're scared. Um, and in fact, we've been scared for a long time now. So I, I really just wanted to hold you to the words that you spoke to at the beginning. Uh, I don't know how members are, of our community can feel safe if our town does not explicitly say that we do not want our money to pay for Israel's genocidal campaign, especially since some of those weapons come from a weapons manufacturer right here in our town. I want my Palestinian children to at the very least know that their town tries to protect children like them. Thank you. Thank you. Next on Zoom is Ellen James. Ellen, are you able to unmute? There should be a box on your screen. There we go. Oh, let me do that again. Ask to unmute. Great. Go ahead. You're welcome to speak with or without video. No, I haven't been able to turn it on. So I'll try one more time and I will speak. Ellen Mosen James, I'm 81 years old, a resident of Northampton, Ward 4. I thank my councilman, Jeremy Debs, for introducing this resolution and urge all of the councilors to support it. I am a Jewish American resident of Northampton. And I am very glad that Bernie Sanders finally introduced a resolution in Congress uh, in, in, the, in the Senate uh, for the first one, and I think he deserves and needs good support for that. So I want my representatives in Congress and the Senate to, to support it.
I very much appreciate all the comments that have been made in support of the resolution here. I come from a Polish Jewish family and lost two grandparents and two aunts among another, a number of other relatives in the Holocaust. I mourn for all people's losses in this um, devastating war, and I want everyone to be safe. Supplying bombs to Israel has not made anyone safe. American bombs and weapons are used by Israel to kill civilians, destroy schools, hospitals, and all the things needed to sustain life. They do not keep people safe. They threaten further war crimes and violent war. There are also uh, American... That's time. If you could finish your sentence. The time for the government to stop this war is now. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you. Thank you. Next in the room, Harrison Williams. Harrison Williams, I live in Florence. Over the last 12 months, I have seen countless toddlers in Gaza with their heads exploded, leaving nothing but a beautiful face and a hollow cavity. I have to tell my two Palestinian to toddlers that my tax dollars support the purchase of those very weapons. The Palestinians will read Made in the USA on the shards of the bombs that fell on those children. An arms embargo is the least we could do. It is the basic moral duty of us all to stop violence. This is a local matter for the council to address as some of these monstrous weapons are manufactured not two minutes away up the road here in Northampton. By members of our own community, they walk past us on the street, they eat dinner next to us in Northampton restaurants. What should I tell my kids? That these people are actively participating in the mass murder of their peeper, people and that our city will not do anything to support them. That Palestinian lives do not matter. We should go further than our, uh, an embargo. We should do everything we can to find a legal resource to raise taxes, uh, tax levies against the local weapons man, uh, companies, profiteering from this genocide. There must be consequences for supporting the erasure and extermination of a people. There must be consequences for making horrific weapons. <coughs> it is not something we want in our city. An arms embargo is a minimum. An arms embargo is a legal necessity. A full and complete arms embargo is a must. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next on Zoom is Laura. Laura, your name and city or town, please. Yes, I'm Laura Kay from North, uh, Northfield, Mass. And I would like to echo and agree with all who have spoken eloquently and who have <coughs> excuse me, presented painful facts in support of the resolution with no limits on the kind of weapons. And I thank them for doing so. And I also thank many of those who have been out on the streets for quite some time, um, you know, doing the same thing. And I would also like to thank the City Council in Mass for your careful and unbiased consideration of the resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Claudia Lefko. Claudia Lefko, 40 Valley Street. Those of us working, working to stop the war of extinction, of genocide against Palestinians have had to speak over and over again about the terror, the trauma, the extraordinary number of deaths, the physical and cultural destruction. Humanitarian experts and journalists are quoted at this podium. 
A few weeks ago, I asked a famous Francis Crow question, does our lifestyle depend on war? And what does that mean, actually? It means that this morning I awoke after a peaceful night of sleep in a house I've lived in for 45 years. People in Gaza have no houses and have been displaced many times. No bombs fell on my house or on any house in my neighborhood. They were falling on houses in Gaza instead, killing women and children. I had plenty of food in the fridge. I had eggs, toast, butter, coffee, even cream. They're starving in Gaza. I had some errands to do, so I went to the bakery and I bought a bread. Bakeries, of course, in Gaza are almost non-existent, and bread, a basic food. I went to the pharmacy to fill a prescription, and there were, of course, there are drugs in my pharmacy, but there are no drugs in Gaza, nor pharmacists, no medical workers, nurses, doctors are detained in jail, dead or injured, barely a hospital remains. There were no snipers in windows on Main Street, ready and willing to shoot me for being out and about in my errands. Those IDF snipers are in Palestine, randomly killing and maiming women and children, men and boys. I realize others in the U.S. are not as fortunate as I am. They don't have a home. They're food insecure. They have no health insurance. These resources, the resources needed to meet the basic everyday needs of people here in our city and in the U.S. are being wasted on the manufacture of U.S. weapons which are sent illegally to Israel. Illegal because Israel uses them to carry out the genocide in Palestine. Our lifestyle does depend on war, but it doesn't have to be, and you all can make a contribution to stopping that. Please vote yes on the resolution. Thank you. Uh, next is Hannah. Hannah, your name and city or town, please. Hi, uh, my name is Hannah. Oh, we, we can't hear you very well. Is there any way for you to turn up your volume or speak closer? Uh, it's, it's very faint. Yeah, speak loudly as close to the microphone as you can. Okay. Um, I'm a Jewish resident of Northampton. I want to thank the council for hearing public comment on this resolution for an arms embargo on Israel. I want to echo so much of what has been said already in support of the resolution without loopholes or dilution of language. Um, as Aspen said earlier, Northampton, a city many believe to be a liberal enclave, houses a weapons manufacturer that produces parts contributing directly to the brutal shredding and slaughtering of many tens of thousands and tens of thousands and tens of thousands of lives in Palestine. Therefore, and as many have said, an arms embargo isn't a theoretical or abstract measure or a symbolic one, but a real and practical measure that relates directly and immediately to Northampton, our community, and the values that we purport to uphold <coughs> for the council to vote in support of this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lois Ahrens. Lois Ahrens, Northampton, Massachusetts. Um, this uh, is an edited version of a longer statement, and I gave Laura the statement, and she said she would uh, send it to the rest of the counselors. So this is November 2nd, 2024. We, the leaders of 15 United Nations and humanitarian organizations, urge yet again all parties fighting in Gaza to protect civilians and call on the State of Israel to cease its assault on Gaza and on the humanitarians trying to help. The situation unfolding in North Gaza is catastrophic. The area has been under siege for almost a month, denied basic aid and life-saving supplies while bombardment and other attacks continue. Just in the past few days, hundreds of Palestinians have been killed, most of them women and children, and thousands have once again been forcibly displaced. Hospital hospitals have been almost entirely cut off from supplies and have come, in, come <coughs> under attack, killing patients. Dozens of schools serving as shelters have been bombed or forcibly evacuated. Tents sheltering displaced families have been shelled, and people have been burned alive. The entire population in North Gaza is at imminent risk of dying from disease, famine, and violence. The 
blatant disregard for basic humanities and the law of war must stop. Member states must use their leverage to ensure and respect international law. This includes withholding arms transfers where there is a clear risk that such arms will be used in violation of international law. The entire region is on the edge of a precipice and immediate cessation of hostilities and a sustained unconditional ceasefire are long overdue. I urge you to support Councillor Dubb's resolution and I thank you for bringing it. Thank you. Thank you. Next on Zoom is Emery. Your name and city or town, please. Hi, my name is Emery Powell. I live in Greenfield. I'm a farmer in Sunderland. Um, I grow along with my coworkers a lot of the food that we eat in our bougie restaurants mm -hmm. and our nice co-ops and there's nothing more that I wish that I could bring that food to the people being forcibly starved in Palestine. Shout out to the people like Fergus Marshall and Ellen James who prove that age and positionality don't mean that you have to lose your sense of human em your sense of justice and your human empathy. So many people have spoken so beautifully tonight and I second many of those voices. I hope you all on the council have that same sense of empathy and justice. And I second the desperate need for an immediate, complete, and full arms embargo. embargo. I yield my time. Thank you. Thank you. In the room, Heather Hutchinson. Thank you. My name is Heather Hutchinson. I am a resident of Leverett. I strongly support approving this arms embargo as written for both moral and economic grounds. The war crimes perpetuated by Israel with the United States support pushes the continued military expansion in the region and blatant slaughter of Palestinian civilians corralled into smaller and smaller areas. This policy prioritization belies the statistic, the reality, that the majority of Americans, Palestinians, or Israelis, Jewish, desire to be safe, raise families, educate our children, have the stability of a home, and create thriving communities. Safety will not arise through sociopathic conquest, land theft, and blatant disregard to human life. The barbarism which the United States perpetuates by sending resources to the war machine in Israel and other countries in the region redirects funds away from our towns and our communities, our support services, our schools, our economies, and broad visions for more sustainable, diverse, and supportive initiatives that benefit people here at home. Considering an estimated 437,000 of Northampton's federal taxes goes to funding Israel's weapons, what could that fund here? Four new elementary school teachers, 1,244 households with solar electricity, 51 households with public housing support. At this juncture, President Biden has the opportunity to distinguish himself as the upholder of his campaign promise to champion humanitarian laws. This resolution and this community can give him a push in the right direction as it takes a stand and sets an example for other Massachusetts towns to do the same. The time is now to send a clear message to Washington and Israel, fund our communities, end the overreach of an apartheid regime, and bring resources home to fund a brighter future for all on this planet. Thank you. Thank you. Next on Zoom is SC. Uh, your name and city or town, please. Sarah Coogan from Springfield. Um, I'd like to second everything Layla Mushabek and others have said in support of this resolution. Um, I don't have much to add myself. There really is little left to say after a year of watching history's first live stream genocide unfold every day on my phone. But I would say that if we continue to do nothing to stop this, I suspect it will, will not be the last. This is not a war. This is not complicated. I would ask the council to do the right thing, to do the brave thing, and please pass the resolution calling for an arms embargo of U.S. arms to the Zionist entity in order to stop their brazen and unrestrained killing 
mass starvation, rape, torture, and shameful targeting of doctors, journalists, and children. Children with our weapons and tax money. Thank you. Thank you. Next in the room, is it Celine? Celine? Celine. Celine. Welcome. Your name and city or town, please. Hi, I'm Celine Kamen. I'm a resident of Ward 3 here in Northampton. And I'm here representing many of my neighbors whose grief and trauma we have been holding together over this abominable horror that we feel we must take every responsible action against and so support passing the arms embargo resolution as written. We would also strongly urge that the council take whatever steps necessarily, necessary to have the city end its agreement or contract with L3 Harris and make Northampton a weapon manufacturing free zone refusing to manufacture or profit from murder or hate. Thank you. Uh, for the uh, for uh, writing this resolution and for everything else that you can do to support us here in the community and around the world. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next on Zoom is Vivian Petard. Thank you. Uh, next, Ronnie Gold. Uh, hi, my name is Ronnie Gold, and I live in Northampton, and I'm here to speak about uh, this resolution about the arms embargo. Um, first, I'd just like to say I've gotten many messages from friends concerned about me being here speaking on why you should not pass the embargo due to my own safety and I hope that disagreeing on a topic I trust nearly everybody that I, th I believe in the room I trust that um, disagreement won't lead to extreme reactions um, so this resolution if it was a paper in school um, a teacher would send it back and fail it due to false information poor citations and I intellectual dishonesty there's not enough time in two minutes to fully explain uh, these issues and offer changes. And so I ask you to either vote it down, move it to committee, or postpone voting until feedback and discussion can happen. I will offer a few examples, though. In the paragraph two, where it says that in the government has, Israel is continuing and has been enabled to attack its attacks against the Palestinian people of Gaza. Israel is not attacking the Palestinian people of Gaza. They are, they are at war. They are at war with a terrorist organization named Hamas. That is what is happening here. That hundred over a hundred uh, hostages are still there, and they are at war with them. So they are not attacking the Palestinian people. They are at war with Hamas. It also says. It's unlawful restriction of life-saving humanitarian aid. Israel has been responsible for the ending or the help, helping to end the polio um, epidemic oh in Gaza through its providing of medicine as one example of the humanitarian aid that it has contributed to. The Lancet, it doesn't take more than a couple of Google, Googlings to see that the Lancet is not a reputable source and has apologized profusely for inaccurate information. That I would lastly time. also add that I was interrupted by some laughter, so I should get a little bit of time. Um, also, Israel's invasion of Lebanon. Israel is again fighting a terrorist organization known as Hezbollah. And that is lastly, time. where it says the Leahy Law, I would like to quote a fellow counselor on here, 
Waverly. I'm, I'm sorry, you do need who to shared we have to have an equal that she knows for that she knows that the Leahy law Ronnie, has been an inaccurate please stop? And inappropriately uh, provided thing. Thank I would you. wish you would have stopped them when they were laughing. Honestly, Alex. I spoke to it. No, not every time. Let's be honest. <clears throat> Multiple times I was interrupted with laughter and your reaction once did not tell them to stop. Thank you. Next on Zoom is Phoebe. Hi, I'm Phoebe Condon. I live in Ward 3. Uh, Phoebe, it's hard to hear you. Could you um, speak closer to the microphone? Yeah, is this any better? Yes. Okay, um, great. I wanted to thank the council for putting this forward. Um, thank you for letting us come together as a community, and thank you to everyone who's sh shown up tonight in support of this resolution. Um, I want to join the collective voices of my neighbors who are asking for a clear, simple, full, and immediate arms embargo resolution. And I'm urging the council to please pass this res resolution with undiluted language without compromise. Um, I think it is a local issue. We could use, um, as we're, as many people have said, there is a weapons ma manufacturer in Northampton. So how could it be not a local issue if this is literally happening in our community? Mm -hmm. um, I think. I want to join the voices who have said there's so much, there are so many better ways to spend our tax dollars. Um, if you asked anyone in this room or asked any child why, what they would like to spend tax dollars on, literally not a single person would write genocide. So I'm baffled why we are doing that um, as a country. Um, I think that companies like this, when weapons manufacturer like L3 Harris won't stop. Um, if they can profit off of this genocide unless we force their hand. Um, I want to agree with my neighbors who have talked about big changes happening from small changes. Um, and I want to agree with community and local government being sites of change. Um, we know this arms embargo will have an impact on how many weapons are coming out of Northampton to go and kill people in Palestine and Lebanon. That's a great start. And I also wonder what ripple effects it could have on legislature elsewhere, on the state level, elsewhere in the country. So I want to urge you, please pass this resolution with undiluted language without compromise. We have a responsibility to pass this resolution, practical, practical and moral imperative to end genocide. Um, and thanks to my neighbors for showing up, and thank you to the councilor members for hearing us. Sorry, it's a little warm in the room, but uh, thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Next in the room is Priscilla Lynch. My name is Priscilla Lynch. I live in Conway, and I am speaking in favor of this resolution, and I hope you will pass the resolution undiluted. Um, I agree with everything, most everything I've heard here tonight that is true, and we all know it's true. We can't deny it. And I'm sure you've noticed how many people are here and where they're from. Some are from Northampton. Some are from Hampshire County, have come down from the hills to be here. Some have come from throughout Franklin County. Others have come from the south, from Holyoke and Springfield. Why? Because we're desperate. We're desperate to end the slaughter. And our government will not do anything. We're desperate for leadership. We are providing that leadership. We need you to provide that leadership. Examples for other towns. Please pass this resolution. It's necessary. And we need you. Thank you. Thank you. Next on Zoom is Joseph Kress. Hi, thank you. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can. My name is Joe Kress. I live on Graves Avenue in Northampton, and I'm a small business owner in Northampton. Thank you to Fergus Marshall for your bravery and eloquent testimony. I believe there's only one answer. I echo all the congruent sentiments in favor of the complete arms embargo that have come before me. There is blood on Northampton's hands insofar 
they continue to be complicit in the operation of Al-3 Harris. Mm -hmm. I'm in favor of a full and complete arms embargo with absolutely zero wavering in language. Additionally, I do urge the town to revoke their operational permit. There is no excuse. Thank you to the city council and everyone that continues to wield their power. Thank you. In the room, Ellen G. <laughs> Someone named Ellen here. <coughs> I, I'm, I'm Ellen Graves. Um, I stand and say, how do we judge other countries? Are we looking at it just for money, whatever? We don't live in those countries and we don't understand what is going on. These people, the people are wanting their own freedom and yet we stand here in this country and say, oh, you can't have that, you have to do it our way. I think we have to stop and understand that the whole world is not just part of the United States. Thank you. In your city or town? Ellen, uh, what is your city or town? Springfield. Springfield. Yeah, just for the minutes. I live in West Springfield, Massachusetts. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Next on Zoom is Emily. Your name and city or town, please. Hi, good evening. My name is Emily DiMartino. I use they and them pronouns, and I live in Ward 4. Um, I'm a descendant of survivors of the Armenian Genocide, and I'm here um, again this evening to speak in support of a full arms embargo. I echo many of the sentiments of uh, folks who have spoken before me, though I would like to attend um, as a healthcare provider. The Lancet is actually a highly regarded peer review journal. Um, but I would also like to particularly thank Councillor Duffs for his attention to constituent concerns. Um, I myself have called Elizabeth Warren and Ed Markey and Congressman McGovern uh, hundreds of times this year uh, requesting, pleading, begging for an arms embargo, begging for support for a ceasefire, begging for di divestment um, from this bloody economy. and. Um, all we get are more and more automated voicemails. I haven't spoken to a real person um, in their offices for months. So I really particularly appreciate how um, local government can be a place for us to uh, share dialogue and come together and um, really contribute to freedom and liberation. And uh, I thank you for listening, Free Palestine. Yay. Thank you. So we have about 15 minutes left in the public comment period, and more people than that wish to speak. So if someone's already said what you would, uh, feel free to just second what they've said. Uh, Dodi Melnikoff. Yeah, and in, in that note, I'm going to do my time to this gentleman sitting next to me. Oh, I'm, I'm on the list later, so. We'll okay. Yep. All right, then I, I'm just. I, come on up to the podium. Yeah, well, come on. <laughs> I won't take too much time because everything has been said and it's been said very well. Um, and it's so important that we're here tonight. And I thank you so much for um, bringing this. Uh, and your, your city or town? Oh, yeah. My name is Dodi Malnikoff, and I live in Greenfield. I have family that lives here in Northampton. And I've uh, paid my share of parking tickets here, so. <laughs> um, so, you know, I just think, it, I think it's important that we come together in uh, local community. Um, and again, I thank you. I think this is a, a perfect setting because we have struggled for so long throughout this year, 
years before to have our um, governments respond uh, to the voice of the people. And I think it was stated before, there's a majority of people who want to see an end to this slaughter in Palestine. So I speak in full support of the embargo um, against arms going to Israel. Um, and in its full entirety without any of the loopholes. Um, and that, that, I think I'm going to just leave it there and thank you. Um, and and I, although I do want to just quickly say, you know, I am looking at this. I do live in Greenfield. I think that, you know, what you're doing here is going to be, um, you know, a great example for the rest of, of the uh, small towns in Western Massachusetts to follow. So um, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next is N. Taskin. Your name and city or town, please. Okay. Hello. My name is Naz Taskin. I'm a resident of Northampton, and I'm a Jewish educator in the school district. So a lot of people have said some really excellent stuff tonight. The one thing I want to add is that on October 10th, 2023, Hamas offered to give back all Israeli hostages, provided that the IDF didn't go into Gaza and Israel refused that offer, and they refused numerous hostage deals since then. What does this tell you? It tells you that it was never about the hostages. It's not about keeping Jews safe, no matter what some crocodile dealers earlier might suggest. Israel wants to annex Gaza, and that is a genocidal intention. So, how do we stop it? It's simple. We cut off the money. We cut off the weapons. In the name of humanity, please vote yes on this. Thank you. Thank you. In the room, Karen Baker. Karen Baker, Ward 4. Um, I'm going to try to make this shorter, but I'm not very good at ad-libbing. Um, so I want to express my support for the resolution that we've been discussing. It's astonishing to me that after everything that Israel has done, after what's currently doing in northern Gaza, along with the brutal invasion of Lebanon, uh, that Israel is allowed to continue unimpeded with the use of my tax dollars and yours. Uh, we're helping to perpetrate the suffering, the genocide, and uh, this money is increasing the possibility of an all-out regional war and everything that entails. I'm really glad that this resolution came forward. I've been feeling for a long time like we need to do something more, especially the urgency is greater now with Trump uh, coming into power. Uh, he's repeatedly talked about finishing the job, and we can only imagine what he would think that should be done. Um, people talk about this being complicated. It is not. In 1991, a white South African told me that it was complicated in South Africa and that we didn't understand. Please don't be confused. 750,000 Palestinians were pushed off their land in 1948. Many more have been dispossessed in the decades since, pushing people off their land, limiting their movements with checkpoints, looking, locking them up, bombing and starving them, is claimed by some to be necessary for self-defense, but as others have said, these actions don't make Israelis or Jews as a whole any safer. It makes them less safe. Um, unless they can manage to kill all the Palestinians or remove them far away, uh, I guess maybe that would work. So let's do what we can to stop this. Let's support this resolution to call for a complete arms embargo. Let's be part of this growing effort to stop the horror we're witnessing and make room for a Palestine where all the people of the region live in dignity and peace. Thank you. Mm -hmm. On Zoom, Paki Wieland. Hi. Uh, Thank you. I, I live in Greenfield, but I lived in Northampton for a long time, and I'm aware of the long history of our taking moral stands, of our city council, the city council of Northampton, taking moral stands. And thank you, Councilor Dobb, for keeping that tradition alive, and I just urge you to support the full arms embargo resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in the room, Raymond Paquette. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. My name is Raymond Paquette, Black Birch Trail, Ward 4. Um, people have made pretty much all of the points I want to make, except that you're going to hear a bunch of noise telling you to don't, not to support this. They're going to tell you that it's anti-Semitic to support um, 
weapons, uh, arms embargo. Maybe if that's the case, opposing genocide is anti-Semitic, get comfortable with that. I've been called anti-Semitic, I've made my peace with that. I don't believe it's true, but you'll be called that, so it's coming. Um, people will say it's not appropriate for city council to take a position. Our political leaders notice, you notice when people take positions, political leaders notice when communities come together, organize to take a position. It's nonsense that Northampton has no reason to do this. Also, when does Northampton try to be normal? Like, I mean, that's, we pride ourselves in doing things that nobody else does. That's what we are. That's good. Um, and this is a genocide. Good time to do something different. So, sorry. Um, also, you will hear, actually, I'd written this before, but you did hear efforts to compare what Hamas did and what Israel does. It's not a war. This is a genocide. Okay. Hamas has rocks. They have some weapons. Not much. They can't. It doesn't compare to the kind of weaponry and destructive capabilities that Israel has. This is not equals fighting each other. Um, if you're not sure, look at what remains of Israel. Look at what remains of Gaza. Nothing remains of Gaza. Um, you'll also hear about fear. You hear a lot about people saying, I'm afraid of what you're going to do to me. That's nonsense. Okay, anybody who's been to a protest, a pro-Palestinian pro protest, the violence never comes from the protesters. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, we saw it at UMass. We've seen it all kinds of places. Sure. So the fear is, it's a tactic. Um, and someone's going to call me names for saying that. Uh, and I have... I just want to point out last thing. Um, I got a lot of information from a letter from the letter that's, that was written to our senators. 111 groups so far have signed it, so we're in good company. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Next on Zoom is Rabbi Ricky. What? Your name and city or town, please. Go ahead. Oh, we're not well. Maybe you could speak closer to the microphone. Please pull up. I'm, I'm doing my best. Oh, wait, where's my phone? Just hang on one second. Yep. We're going to pull off the road. Okay. That's... Um, so, like, first of all... It's David Seinberg. I said this is Rabbi David Seinberg. Secondly, <coughs> I'm down for any resolution that's going to get the U.S. to apply the Lehi law properly and to make a change in what's going on in Israel. It is, nevertheless, ridiculously disrespectful for the previous speaker and uh, other people stickers to call people's fear bullshit. It's not. To call people's uh, tears crocodile tears. They're not. People who care about Israel have deep feelings. They're still in trauma. I know it's hard for people to understand this. They're still in trauma over October 7th. It's not going away for them as long as the hostages are there. And I do think that it's hard to think clearly under those circumstances. And it's hard to, to look at what's happening. So what is happening is hard. Israel does need to stop. The language in, in Section 2, however, doesn't contextualize and it is going to inspire and wake up people's fears because of that. It doesn't say Hezbollah has been bombing Israel for so and so many months. The entire northern, by the way, the of Israel has been evacuated because of that. It doesn't say that and Israel's response has been. And the reason what Israel's response is because it's, been, it's insane. I agree. The peace movement in Israel agrees. Most people agree about that. So say it in a way that doesn't instill fear in the people who care about Israel also. Because in principle, what this resolution is saying is right and it should happen. And there's just a better way to do it that preserves community and holds us together instead of dividing us like that last speaker, who some seems only interested in dividing. Thank you. Thank you. In the room, uh, Ismail. Welcome. Your name and city or town? Hi, everyone. My name is Ismail Assad. I live in Greenfield. Since, Sorry, two, go ahead. since 2007 until October, before October 23, Israel has been attacked, attacked Gaza six times. And the six times, 16,800 Palestinians get killed. 6,800 kids. Since 2007 until now, 
more than 32,000 Palestinian get murdered just in Gaza. More than the total of the population of Northampton, just kids. Israel in this world, the people who get killed and the people who get injured, 10% of the population of Gaza, that means if it is happening in America, that means gonna be 40 million people. That means 20 million gonna be get killed, murders. That means 10 million kids. There is 10,000 kids still under the rubble in Gaza. We are, as a Palestinian, we feel like an orphan in this world. Mm -hmm. There is no country defending us. The only defend us, the people like you, who support us. I'm not gonna discuss here the one who came from Ukraine and came from Russia and Poland and came to my country and take my house and take my farm and make me a refugee all over around the world and in, 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 in the name of 3,500 years ago, the God give me this land. I'm not gonna discuss this. We are now, there is kids burning, burning alive in Gaza. Kids are starving until death from hunger, from Thursday, and all kind of horrific things happen in Gaza right now. We are in a time we could added gas to the people who are burning there, or we could shut down the fire in there. The last sentence I'm gonna say, yep. there is a sentence in the Quran said, Lawla ba'dun nasi, lawla ba'dun nasi, supporting like um, if there is there is some people supporting other people if there is no people supporting other people god gonna turn this land upside down and i trust you guys thank you so much thank you <laughs> on zoom is kristen your name and city or town please uh you're still muted Uh, there we go. Um, Kristen LD Northampton, uh, we're at seven. <coughs> I'll begin to join the many others who are asking you to please support the depth resolution uh, in full in support of an arms embargo. Um, other people have spoken uh, so much truth tonight. I don't have a lot to add. Um, I hopped on a little bit late. I, a thing on my mind is with Trump's pending assumption of, of leadership nationally. Um, the transfer of power that the warmongering and the is already celebrating. It's as important as ever that municipalities everywhere speak up loudly in yes. giving hours for what is right. Um, arms embargo now, please, please support this. Uh, sit on the right side of history. Um, divest from genocide. Thank you. I see my time. Yes. Thank you. Right. In the room, Jamie. My name is Jamie Samaya. Um, I'm a student at Smith College and I spend the majority of my year here, but I am a legal resident of Weston, Connecticut. I'm here to voice my support for the resolution calling for a complete and total arms embargo as it is originally written. I'm Jewish and it is truly painful to hear people claiming that this genocide is necessary for our safety or part of Israel's right to defend of itself, itself, neither of which are true. To be brief, I'll say that the funding and providing the actual weaponry for the ethnic cleansing, the genocide of the Palestinian people, is unacceptable, and we must act on all levels, local as, local as we can, act in opposition. This is an opportunity for Northampton to s collectively stand against, albeit in a relatively mild manner, against Israel's nationalistic, ethnic supremacist, and genocidal actions that we have witnessed in real time. We have no excuse not to do everything in our power to support not even the, the well-being, but the survival of Palestinians. And this is, resolution is one of the easiest, most obvious, least taxing ways for the town to do that. Thank you. Thank you. On Zoom, Anna. Hi, my name is Anna Fishman. I'm a resident of uh, Northampton, Leeds area. Um, specifically, I'm a Jewish resident. 
And I just want to hop on to echo um, and support all preceding statements in favor of an unconditional and immediate embargo of all weapons to Israel. Um, the Israeli occupation and apartheid state and present genocide are keeping no one safe. There's no such thing as peace or safety that rests on the brutal physical and cultural extermination of another people. And I want to thank Councillor Dubs for bringing this uh, resolution forward. Um, it's really the least we can do uh, to put, put a stop in some way to this genocide. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mayor, is that our time? For the, that, is. that is our time. That was a public comment period. I want to thank everyone for speaking. Uh, we're going to take a 10-minute recess, and then we'll resume. Thank you.
Okay, welcome back to Northampton City Council. Um, <clears throat> we just did public comment, and um, with the council's permission, I would like to do announcements in the consent agenda and then go right to the resolution, Councilor Dubbs' resolution. Uh, is that acceptable with the council? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do we have Council Councilor Perry with us now? Or? Uh, yes. He's on, okay. He, he well, join at 7.15, but whether he's on at the moment. <laughs> okay. Um, so that, that brings us to announcements from councilors and the mayor. Councilor Labarge. Get you to it. Um, I just wanted to um, tell everybody, and it's a reminder, on this Saturday at the Blue Bonnet at 8.30 a.m., we had the veterans breakfast. I'm pretty sure the probably all the tickets are sold out. And all the veterans are free and their spouses are twenty dollars. And maybe they might be fifteen, but I know we all had to pay twenty dollars about a month ago for the tickets being the spouses. So and it's usually from like nine o'clock to eleven, but it's just amazing on um, the guest speakers that we have. And I know the mayor attends it also. The mayor's always attended it. And we've had some city councilors too. So also too, a very important one, is that Veterans Day itself, which is on the 11th. And it's a parade, a Memorial Day parade and it's for the memories. And all of our veterans, both husbands or wives or whatever, on the memory of them keeping us safe in our country. And it's gonna be at the VFW and it will be the start time of getting ready to march at 10.30 a.m. is when you get there, wait in line, and you take off at 11 o'clock and march down to Main Street to the um, Trinity Row Park. And I've also been told that it's, it's not a long ceremony, it's kind of short. So hopefully, I know what counselors already have signed up. I know that the mayor is always there anyways, no matter who the mayor is. And um, I, think, I think it's really well worth coming to this. It's, it's just amazing to see all our veterans and, and, and also our female veterans. And I'm there all the time because my husband was in the Army during the Vietnam War and his other buddy from Leeds too, they went in together, the men, and came out together. And it's just amazing, the respect and this is what we're talking today, I heard. People talking today about respect and dignity. And this is what it's about in our community. So just a reminder for the two days of what's going on. Thanks. Thank you. Alfara, could you make Councillor Perry a co-host so in case he has an announcement? Um, Councillor Mayori, you have an announcement? Sure, yeah, thank you. Uh, I'd like to announce um, as my role of chair of the finance committee our upcoming budget listening sessions uh, the finance committee will hold two hybrid budget listening sessions these are uh, li listening sessions about FY 2025 budget um, we've done this in the past uh, this is our third year I believe they will be uh, the first one is Wednesday November 13th uh, starting at 6 here in Council Chambers and on Zoom, and then Monday, November 18th, also at 6, also hybrid. Th this is a chance for counselors to be in li true listening mode and to really hear the priorities. I can't hear. I can't hear. You. Oh, here, I'll try to. You want the dates again? Yep. Okay. Um, Wednesday, November 13th. Okay. 6 o'clock. And Monday, November 18th. Six o'clock, and I'll you send these. Mention that, and yeah, we got a notice on that. Yeah, I thought you made different dates. Oh no, 
Uh, yeah, so for two, and so yeah, we're going to, we're, we're here to listen to residents get, um, tell us their, make comments on their priorities for the next uh, upcoming budget. Um, we're, the, the, the limit will be three minutes and then I'll try to circle back for questions. We're only gonna do kind of, we generally just have cl uh, clarifying questions answered. Um, it's really our time to listen. And I have personally found this really helpful, I, t especially because it happens way before the budget. So I'm kind of carrying uh, the voices of, the, of residents through the whole process. And then at the end of both sessions, we'll write up a synopsis or probably Laura or <laughs> we'll write up a synopsis and we'll send it to the mayor and school budget um, comments we will send to the school committee and to the superintendent. We've also invited the school committee to, to listen. So I hope that you will consider uh, weighing in at this point. We're trying to be proactive and I, we're very curious to hear what you have to say. Thank you. And just to be clear, yeah. I think uh, you, you meant oh. fiscal year 2026. Oh, I'm sorry, 2026, yeah. right. I've begins, yes. Which begins yes. July yes. 1st right. of next FY year. FY 2026, so not about this budget, but about the budget process that will start in January. But we're just trying to get a, a jump start. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that correction. Thank you. Uh, other announcements from counselors? Councilor Elkins. I, I don't have an announcement. I would just rem remind everybody um, to speak up. Okay. Uh, Councilor Barges is, is uh, and I, I'm mumbling. Cal Councilor Barges. And yes. it does it help to have the microphone closer? Yeah, it, that would help. Okay. So if everyone can keep their microphone closer, that would be great. Um, any other announcements from counselors? Okay. Um, Mayor, do you have announcements? <laughs> How's this? Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. It uh, it has been a long week. Um, first, I want to thank the city clerk and her office and all of the election workers for their work, and for a very smooth and organized election day here in Northampton. Um, thank you, everyone, who spoke tonight. Uh, as we look to the near future, it's very important that we pull together as a Commonwealth and as a city to protect the rights and the sports that we have here in Massachusetts and in Northampton. And I'm very grateful to do that work with you. Um, and we must be steadfast in it. Um, also this week, we are experiencing one of my areas of great concern in terms of the advances and the work and the policies that I fear will be devastated by the next uh, presidential administration. That is the climate crisis and its effects. It was over 80 degrees here yesterday. Uh, precipitation, uh, over the last couple of months has been at an unprecedented low and rainfall was well below average for the month of October and now into November. Um, as you all know, Northampton Fire Rescue has been dealing with a significant brush fire in the Fitzgerald Lake Conservation Area since last Friday. They have been doing this work with the help of mutual aid from many surrounding communities um, and also DCR, the State Department of Fire Services, and with aerial support of water drops to areas that couldn't be reached by foot or by ATV from the Massachusetts Air National Guard and the Massachusetts State Police Air Wing. They are finishing fire suppression operations, uh, which included extinguishing thousands of hotspots. Um, though, until we have a real soaking rainfall, they will need to monitor and ensure that hotspots don't pop up again. So this was, although the major operation is ending, uh, we need to keep monitoring until um, we really get some rain. Um, I wanna, of course, thank Northampton Fire Safety for their remarkable work and to express the city's gratitude to the communities and the state agencies that answered the call for support for days. Um, to give some perspective, Massachusetts usually averages 15 wild uh, wildland fires in October. This year, there were 200 in October. That's about a 1,200% increase, and that does not include ours, which was detected on November 1st. Um, I was just in Chicopee today, uh, where there was a large brush fire that forced the closure of the Mass Pike for some time. So they are continuing to happen. Um, because of that, we are asking everyone to help prevent fires um, due to these continuing dangerous and uh, warm conditions. This week, uh, Northampton, as well as many other communities, have issued a citywide ban on outdoor fires. 
um, that is effective immediately um, and is in place until further notice. We did this in alignment with the recommendations of the Fire Chiefs Association of Massachusetts and with guidance from the state fire marshal, John Davin, former fire chief here in Northampton, um, and uh, Governor Healy's office as well. We have suspended all outdoor fire permits and are prohibiting the use of fire pits, chimeneas, outdoor fireplaces, and other recreational or open flames not covered under state uh, regulations. We are also asking all residents to please avoid using outdoor cooking or heating equipment, uh, refrain from using lawn mowers, ATVs, or power tools near dry vegetation. We are at sort of maximum uh, dry leaves on the ground, so uh, please try not to use tools near leaves that um, could uh, ignite. Um, any smoking materials, please take the extra step and fully extinguish them in water and sand. Don't just step on them, make sure that it is absolutely out. Um, and likewise, dispose of any ashes from indoor fireplaces in a metal can and then douse with water and secure that container. So thank you to everyone for your cooperation in preventing these brush fires. And um, again, thank you to Northampton Fire Rescue for their tireless work this past week um, and to all that came to Northampton's aid in this week. So thanks everybody. Thank you. Okay, any other announcements? All right. Uh, we'll do the consent agenda. So I'm going to read the consent agenda. And uh, if any counselor would like an item removed, then we can debate that individually. Otherwise, there is no debate on the consent agenda. Uh, the minutes of October 1st and October 17th, 2024. 24.148 appointments to various committees, all positive recommendations from city services to the Community Preservation Committee, Devin Bruce, to fill a vacancy, to the Historical Commission, Hannah Ray, uh, taking the place of Barbara Blumenthal, also to the Historical Commission, uh, Douglas Thayer, to fill a vacancy, to the License Commission, Amy K. Lane, taking the place of Helen Kahn, 24.154, appointments to the Conservation Commission and Housing Partnership, uh, both positive recommendations from City Services. The, to the Conservation Commission, Richard Meyer, filling the term of Jennifer Smith. To the Housing Partnership, Chris Palames, uh, to fill a vacancy. Uh, and 24.163, appointments to various committees. These are for referral to city services. To the Agricultural Commission, Stan Zawalik, reappointment. Richard Jaski, a reappointment. And uh, to the Arts Council, Amelia Shaw, to fill a vacancy. To the Human Rights Commission, Kathleen Chapman, to fill a vacancy. Are there any removals from the consent agenda? Councilor Rothenberg. Of the appointment to the Licensing Commission. Okay. So we will remove uh, the appointment of Amy Kaling to the License Commission. Laura, can we vote individually? We, we can just remove that one instead of the whole order. Okay. Okay. So looking for a motion to approve the consent agenda minus that removal. Move to approve the remaining consent agenda. I second it. Okay, motion made by Councillor Moulton and seconded by Councillor Clemmer. Um, and Councillor uh, Perry is with us, so we will do a roll call vote. Councillor Councillor Dobbs. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Clemmer. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Perry. I made him a co-host. Um, Councillor Perry, can you hear us? See. He may have stepped away. Okay. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. Okay. And one more time for Councillor Perry. Absent from the vote. Okay. That passes with eight. Yes. Votes and one absence. Um, now we'll take up uh, to the, the appointment of Amy K. Lane to the License Commission. Councilor Rothenberg. I just have a different vote. That's the only reason I pulled it. Okay. Thanks. Um, would there be a motion? Uh, move to approve. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So that was a motion to approve uh, to the License Commission, a a to a Amy K. Lane. And um, <clears throat> Councilor Rothenberg had said that 
she had pulled it because she wanted uh she's going to vote differently than the rest but but didn't have uh, is there any discussion okay seeing none a roll call please on the, the second was that councilor moulton councilor labarge okay okay um councilor elkins yes councilor jarrett yes councilor clemmer yes councilor labarge yes councilor maori yes Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Perry. Oh, not here. Councillor Rothenberg. Abstain. And Councillor Dobbs. Yes. So that passes with seven yes votes, one abstention, and one absence. Uh, so that concludes the consent agenda. And so with the councilor, council's permission, we will move to... Um, Resolution 24.157, a resolution calling for an embargo of U.S. arms to Israel. This is in second reading. And uh, Councillor Dubbs, would you like to speak to this? Yes, um, thank you. Um, um, I just first of all, I want to thank um, Nick Matern and Jen Scarlett and Peter Kakos, as well as Matt Spurlock, um, for helping me and to navigate um, the, this issue and um, to work on the language. Um, I'm happy with um, the original changes that we made um, based on people's suggestions. And um, and I guess um, I feel like it might be a good time to just kind of get to the point, which is um, there's there's been issue over um, the, um, the fifth, the second part of the fifth clause of the, or yeah, the fifth clause of the resolution. Um, well, so the original language did not include the word unrestricted. I, the original language was introduced to introduce legislation to impose a total and immediate embargo on unres or sorry on on sales and shipment of U.S. weapons to Israel. Um, after speaking with um, a few people, including um, Councillor Jarrett, um, it was actually Councillor Jarrett's suggestion. Um, to me to um, consider adding the word unrestricted. Um, I um, so you know I, I I have it I put it here on the on the um, on the agenda so that we could have the discussion about that word. Um, personally, I would feel comfortable voting on the resolution on the resolution without that word. Um, but I feel like we should have a conversation about it, which is why I put it on you know why, why I put your suggestion on here. Um, so, um, the unrestricted language mean, would mean that all future weapons sales would be restricted to comply with U.S. International, international law. This would be in harmony with the first part of the resolution and the Sanders Joint Resolution because it relies on, for example, uh, the, re the restrictions of U.S. law uh, that of security assistance to foreign military units that have committed gross violations of human rights and block humanitarian assistance. Uh, there are also restrictions imposed by international law, including international humanitarian law, international human rights law, and the judgments and orders of the International Court of Justice. Um, what um, adding the word unrestricted would do would be to ask our congressional delegation to make sure that future sales, future sales to Israel are always subject to the restrictions to these laws. Um, so I do understand why we would, um, why we would put that language in there, but I also see um, why we would not put it in there in that it would mean that we would be rich, we would be um, calling for a total embargo on all sales and shipment of U.S. weapons. Um, and I can, you know, I can see both sides. Um, I, I, um, I'm hoping that um, we can pass the resolution without that word, I think, because it would be stronger. It would be more clear that, that um, you know, Sending any weapons to Israel would get it give it, it it just further empowers them, emboldens them, and strengthens them to continue doing the atrocities that they're doing. Um, so I guess I would just I would just like to directly ask other counselors if that's okay. Um I guess if you don't mind, Counselor Jared, if we if I if I just would could ask you, um, since you're the one that suggested the word, would you feel comfortable suggesting or sorry supporting the, the resolution without that word um well th thanks for for bringing that up and and you know add, adding that to um i'm glad we're going to have a discussion about that um <clears throat> you know i 
uh, unrestricted is the word that we used in the resolution that we passed in February. Um, and, um, you know, the point is to, to stop the escalation. It's to stop the offensive nature. Um, and the question is, you know, are there defensive weapons that are, uh, that are, useful and valid and i think that's that's i'm not sure we've built the case to in a, in the resolution here that 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 shouldn't be the case um and so that i you know i i support passing it as amended but i'm willing to listen and hear from other counselors uh, council president can we before we go further can we get this projected on the screen so sure we all are looking at the same resolution Absolutely. The resolution that was on the agenda that was posted Tuesday did not have the word unrestricted. And it was only brought to my attention during our recent recess that this ter this word is now in the resolution. Okay. So I, I just would like to make sure that we're all looking at the same resolution. Councillor Dubs? Thanks. I just wanted to point out that I did, I did hand it in on Monday and it was on the agenda. Uh, by by Mon uh, by Laura got back to me and said that yeah, I think the preliminary what I'm saying agenda is that had a, the earlier version the, and I posted the version the of the day. resolution that was attached to the agenda when it was posted for the final time on Tuesday I'm looking at right now and it does not say unrestricted okay so there may have been a timing issue yeah yeah, so. yeah so absolutely why don't we bring that up Laura would you be able to bring that up on the screen we can zoom in on that paragraph A little more. It wasn't highlighted in the um, in hard copies. It's not in the hard copy. Um, the final version of the agenda did have the amended version uh, with the word unrestricted in it. The preliminary did not. So I don't. Yep, and if you could scroll just a little to the side so that we could, there we go, now we can see it all. So, um, so the, it reads, one, support and work for approval of Senator Sanders' above noted legislation, and two, introduce legislation to impose a total and immediate embargo on, and then the, uh, you know, Councilor Dubbs introduced a, uh, a the word a the proposed amendment um which is unrestricted and then sales and shipment of u.s weapons to israel counselors Anyone have any comments about this resolution? <laughs> yeah. Yes, okay. Councillor Mayor. I, well, I, I, I'm still looking at the unrestricted word, but I just have a general comment about um, about the resolution, and um, what I found is over the year is that when things are proposed, you know, people are horrified by what's going on, and when things are proposed, we kind of say, "Oh, that wouldn't work," or "We can't do that," or "That's not fair." I think we're at a point where, and, and so the assumption kind of is, or the, or the reality is, then we're saying this is, you know, this is going to continue, right? Like that's the tacit kind of thing. If it's like the reality's here, and we're proposing things, and if we don't, you know, think they're this way or that way, then we're just going to kind of continue going. One, the only thing I know about this is that just can't be. Like that's the, really the only thing I know is that we got to try anything. This is untenable. That's all I really have to say about it. Thank you. Councillor Rothenberg. Thanks. So just because I, it's sort of a direct response, but I, I see Councillor Moulton had his hand up, so thank you. Okay. Um, I think I will speak to 
some of the other side of that, I understand the perfect is the enemy of good situation. And I think you're right. And I think, I think we're perfect is the enemy of good. Uh, I mean, perfect is the enemy of done. Thank you for making me repeat that so I could think about what I was saying. So I think that that's correct. I think Councilor Maori is correct. And I think that we also likely have the luxury in Northampton of this probably not being a resolution that will fail. I'm quite confident it will pass. And so I think that in my work as a city councilor and in my work as a stenographer, I do care about making an accurate record of what the community is saying through our work as much as we can. But before you give me the hands, you know, part of what my community is saying is that they're grappling with this thing that Councillor Maori is saying. We don't, we can't grapple with that because the time to act is now. And my part, my piece, my small piece is to say, but there can be a record that some of us have grappled with that because it's not going to stop your resolution. And it is an accurate portrayal of the community. That being said, I am deeply impressed with how organized you all still are. I am deeply touched that people came to us from other communities and saw us as a place where they could come and have a regional voice heard. I would like to see the Human Rights Commission get restarted again here, and I would like to see them take up some of these questions, maybe about L3, questions about what do we do with maybe the quarter of a million of property tax. Does that sound right? It's close to it. Yeah, I don't know if we have any discretion there, but I would like to see us um, think about more actions that can be taken locally that really express something that even people who grapple on the other side of this re resolution, an action that isn't such a specific word that people can't get lost in the weeds of, but they can say, yeah, we're all against violence. So we would like to deal with this weapons manufacturing situation. So I'd like to see you do some of those things and invite opportunities for there to be some of that uh, reaching across the resolution. Because it is, it is not the case that everyone who is uncomfortable with this resolution is uncomfortable in ways that I am comfortable with. I'm uncomfortable with some of the ways that people push back on this, but. I tell you in good faith and all sincerity as a representative and as a neighbor, I have many good neighbors who in good faith do have some problems and I can't fix it for them. And you can't fix it for them. You're advocates. So let's find other places as well where we can work together and keep uh, expressing that, that gesture of peace. And thank you for coming. Thank you. Councilor Moulton, do you wish to speak? Uh, well, I, I, uh, th thanks, Councillor Dubbs, for all the work you've done on this. I, I know that uh, from our experience uh, in February uh, that th these are very difficult uh, resolutions to to work on and to uh, to. Uh, and, and, and I, I appreciate everyone who who has spoken tonight. Um, it is important uh, that we deal with this as as a local community. I do believe that. Uh, that, that big changes ca can come from small changes and can, can come from uh, the grassroots. Um, I, I see this resolution as building on the February 27th uh, ceasefire resolution that we that we approved, um, and uh, which is referenced uh, in the very first clause. I do support the Sanders joint resolution of disapproval. Uh, which uh, which would block uh, uh, the 20 billion in very specific offensive uh, U.S. weaponry. I, I do support, uh, and I, I would support the resolution with the uh, with the addition of the the word unrestricted, which is consistent with the terminology that we used in that February 27th resolution. Councillor Elkins. 
Um, thank you, Councillor Dubbs, uh, and uh, I appreciate that we live in a community that continues to grapple with hard things, uh, even in these hardest of times. Um, I want to start by saying I absolutely support Senator Sanders' joint resolution and have made that known to my representatives uh, uh, at, uh, at the federal level. What I also support and what's not mentioned in this resolution is, th is that in mid-October, the Biden administration uh, set a deadline to, quote, demonstrate a sustained commitment to implementing and maintaining 15, uh, 15 policy changes related to the kind of support of humanitarian entry of humanitarian, the kinds of things we're all talking about and know must happen. Mm -hmm. um, that deadline is coming up in November 13th. Um, I pray, and I don't use that word lightly, I pray uh, that the Biden administration is uh, prepared to back that up and act on that. Um, I, if anything, uh, would I wish this that was referenced here. Um, I simply cannot call, support, however, a call for a total embargo. I think at the very minimum, the uh, inclusion of the word unrestricted does echo what I did support and, and continue to support. Um, but I believe that implicit in a call for total embargo is uh, to say that a country cannot um, defend itself. Exactly. Senator Sanders, in his remarks in support of his resolution, did not mince words. He called Netanyahu for what he is and what he has done. And I hope very, and, and this is the resolution that we support and that I support and have met my legislatures know I support. I hope McGovern is watching. And I hope that if he is, and that Senator, uh, and that very much Senator uh, Warren and Markey do support this and offer their own um, legislation um, in, that is consistent with. Here's where I'm at. <laughs> it appears that like us, the nation of Israel is losing its democracy. It is losing its war against autocracy on the day of our election, mm -hmm. Netanyahu bombed more hospitals. I know that. He also fired the defense minister that was uh, not by any means uh, moderate, but was uh, uh, still among the, the voices in his government calling for a ceasefire. And on that particular day, people in Israel rose up and they demonstrated. And these are the people who know that they are losing their democracy and their country. And on that same election day, boots on the ground, North Korean boots on the ground in Ukraine at the behest of Russia. And, and while they were doing that, Russia was sending hoax bomb threats to polling places all over our country. And I only just say that because I, um, and it does tie, and I do, I do, I will get to the point, which is to say, when I say that I can't support the part that says there is there mu the, a total embargo, it is the people who took to the streets against their tyrant that I feel like we don't support when we say you can't defend yourself and when we would take away all of that without any conversation, without any <coughs> wants or any discussion. And so I know I am, uh, I know I'm making um, uh, that, as Councilor Rothenberg said, it is, it is not universal. I've heard from people on the other side of this and the tremendous emotion and I have seen the anti-Semitic graffiti mm -hmm. and the, and, and the, what, our kids are hearing in school, um, and it, and it's 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 not good, um, and I can't go as far as to say I would not support this. I support Senator Sanders' legislation, and I would support it for that. But I can't. I, I think the minimum that we have to do before I could vote yes on this is is it leave in unrestricted. 
I agree. I also, um, so that that is where I stand. I'm prepared to vote for what I pulled up on today mm -hmm. that included the unrestricted. Um, I the uh, language to me has a little bit of issue with total and immediate embargo on unrestricted sales. Seems uh, contradictory. Um, I mean, it just within one sentence, it seems it seems a little uh, muddy. But um, but all that being said, so I um, if if there is a desire, if there's a strong desire to pull that out. Um, I, I I don't I could not support this resolution, but I. I would as it came to us today on the agenda. Pull it out. Total embargo hey, now. Please, please let us speak. Okay. Okay. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Um, I'm hearing what our councilors are saying. And I want to thank Councilor Elkins. I think that was very powerful. And I think what you were talking about was to defend themselves if they don't have guns or, or, or any kind of equipment there if they're not delivered correctly, Counselor? I can't speak to the, I can't, I can't speak to the technical specifications of what constitutes defensive versus offensive. Right. I exactly. would limit it to, exactly. I support Sanders' resolution, which. I do too, so. definitely. Uh, I would feel better as a city counselor of removing the unrestricted. I, I, I just feel uncomfortable about that language. And I've heard Councillor Elkins talk, and it's making sense with what she's saying. No matter what country it is, it could be Brazil, it could be Port anywhere, Greece or anywhere. I mean, are they just going to go without having any type of materials to defend themselves? I have family in Greece. I have family Please, in Greece. you're out of order. I mean, we need to be realistic here. I, I feel comfortable with Bernie Sanders' resolutions and what they have, and I feel comfortable with this resolution, but I'd like to see the unrestricted removed. That's right. my feeling. So I, I, yeah, I just wanted to be clear that Councillor Elkins was in favor of unrestricted be staying. Do, would you like a clarification? Yes, please. Right. Maybe cut. Um, uh, so I can speak to that. Yes. So, so I'm in favor. So, You're what in we favor of the unrestricted of leaving the unrestricted in. Okay. Um, because it is a, it says to uh, impose an embargo, which is to say, don't, um, don't allow sales, of. Uh, for just any purpose, the unrestricted for any purpose. So this is to say, sales would still be allowed of of re, of restricted, okay, of, of, res restricted. of restricted things, and which would be restricted essentially to defense. To okay. a genocidal entity. Okay, please, you're out of order. This is out of order. Could I, could I have? I, I would love help from other counselors as well. Yes. We're gonna Total vote now. now. We're gonna vote. Total embargo now. We'll have to. Total embargo now. Total embargo now. Okay, we're, now. we're going to take a recess. Now. Five minutes. Can you put the resolution up, please, Alex? We are in recess till nine thirty.
Thank you. We are back at Northampton City Council after a recess. We are discussing 24.157, a resolution calling for an embargo of U.S. arms to Israel. And I uh, ask uh, for the last time that, <coughs> count that folks allow us to conduct the meeting. Um, if there are further interruptions and we can't do the meeting, we're going to have to recess and then resume on Zoom only, which is uh, permitted in our rules. Um, was anyone in the middle of talking, or would anyone like to go next? Okay. Oh, no, go ahead. Yeah, Councillor Clemmer. Oh, um, yeah, so, <laughs> um, thank you, Councillor Dobbs, for uh, writing up this resolution and bringing it to Council, and um, um, I heard from uh, constituents today, and I spoke to different people, and um, I just want to say that I'm against this horrific war. I'm against them holding hostages and atrocities that are going on in Gaza. And um, I'm one of the co-sponsors of the two resolutions that were written and um, presented and passed in February. Um, and um, I'm for a ceasefire in Gaza. And um, uh, you know, th recently there's been um, been a lot of uh, vandalism, uh, anti-Semitic vandalism in Northampton, and I'm I'm concerned about that. And the constituents that I spoke to are also feel um, that this is uh, could cause targeting of Jewish and Israeli people in town. So I'm a little concerned about that part of it. Um, the, this, the resolutions that we wrote were more inclusive um, for everybody involved in the war. And um, so I, it, that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, and I'm also, I, I support the Sanders resolution, and um, I'm also terrified of what's going to happen when the Trump administration comes over because, uh, you know, he's. There's going to be no holds barred. Um, Netanyahu can do whatever he wants, and I'm sure there will be a lot of Israelis that are collateral damage to um, taking over Palestine. And um, so um, I have concerns about this um, resolution, and um, from what I heard from my constituents today, too. Thank you. Councilor Rothenberg. Okay, I officially actually have no idea what's happening. I didn't expect any of this. It's a very different tone than the last time this was before us, and I don't see that the situation has changed. So my apologies, and maybe my comments are premature, and I will keep an open mind as we continue to deliberate. Did you want to speak? Yeah. Okay, okay Councillor Mayor. I wanted people who hadn't spoken. Yeah, yeah thank um, you. No, I was just kind of, I'm just kind of thinking about the language and, I mean, the thing is, there's other choices besides Israel being um, without defense. They could abide by international law and not starve people. I'm just saying, like, the, the choice isn't actually what we're saying it is. I mean, we're saying, you know, I mean, they're violating U.S. and international law, and they're, they're you know, putting in obstacles to starve people. I mean, if any of those if those tenets would change, you know, things might change as well. So I, I guess I'm saying, you know, if I, what this is really doing is putting pressure on Israel to change to pivot, and I think with this incoming uh, Trump administration, this is really this is the time to do this. I mean, it, it's going to be unbridled. It's heartbreaking. I. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think that it, you know they have stockpiled. I don't think the. Cho I guess I just want us to feel like there's choices here, and the, I don't think the choice is suddenly the next day Israel, you know, has you know n nothing. First of all, there's the process in which they can, you know, they can start showing up and negotiating and um, and working with people to, to for a ceasefire. I mean, there's so many. There's a big range of options there, and I guess I, I mean in terms of defense weapons or. 
defense and the word unrestricted, I mean, we'd have to really know what those are. What is a defense weapon? I mean, I guess, do we know what they, are they, do they look different? I mean, I, I'm just saying, like, what is defending yourselves t to Netanyahu? I mean, we'd have to, we'd have to know what those terms were. And restricted or unrestricted, I mean, my only, you know, because Trump is coming into the White House, I mean, what's his restriction gonna be? I mean, that's my problem with it, is it's just very vague. Yeah. We're the Northampton City Council, I think this is the gist of it. I, I think that, um, yeah, I just think that those words can be co-opted, so I'm just, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Elkins, and then Councillor Labarge. I, for what it's worth, I actually agree with that. I, yeah. And that is the reason why I would actually prefer that we take out the second clause entirely second. Um, of, of that um, because it is imprecise. It is hard to define. I think it's tied to actually knowable concrete things, which is sort of the how the Leahy Law is interpreted in definitions, and definitions, and that is why this is woefully inadequate to speak to that. Um, and but the Sanders resolution, which we have all said we support, yeah. it, what it it's very short. It's very pithy. It's uh, uh, it specifies the weapons uh, that 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 he would restrict, and I would urge everybody to look at his the, uh, okay. Senator Sanders' um, remarks when he um, introduced yeah. that legislation, um, and he spoke to. You know, he spoke, he spoke to, he didn't mince words, he didn't deny the atrocities, he didn't uh, 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 do any of those things, but he, but the resolution itself enumerates what I, th what he saw yeah. uh, as our, rep well not ours, but you know, it's representative, um, good people of Vermont, um, and what at he and his foreign policy expertise, I believe he's, what is he, he's on the, Foreign po I, yeah, he's he's on one of the foreign policy uh, committees, and and he specified what he did um, to because it represented offensive weapons. Um, I also we also said you know we that the Leahy um, the, that the the laws that govern sales and whether or not they're being used to uh, commit atrocities and war crimes. I um, I agree with all that. Those those laws are being broken. Um, but they, they are broken with offensive weapons. They are not broken with with the weapons that um, that pr protect uh, civilians in Israel from incoming missiles. Um, and that is and so that is why I say I, I don't the folks who took to the streets to say and and have to. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen for Israel and their democracy. Yeah. I know ours looks really bad right now. Um, and I, I don't actually have much doubt that if, uh, you know, T Trump is certainly not waiting around for what Northampton has to say about this. No. Um, and, and that is the reason why it is not the message of what it says to Biden. We're not going to say anything to Trump. Um, and but I do think it is meaningful to the people in this community who have ties there, who are raising their children there, that would be if they were there out in the street fighting for that, for what they see as their democracy and the rule of law there in the same way that we I think may find ourselves here doing, and so so that's right. I mean, so I actually agree. I I think I would take that second clause out. It's not clear, and there there are better ways to be specific. Um, and and uh, we don't if we want to send if we want to send a message and we want to there there's there is a guidepost there, and it's what Senator Sanders did. Thank you. We'll go to Councillor. Uh, please. Please. You're out of order. Uh, we'll go to Councillor Labarge and then Councillor Clemmer. Oh, on the screen? Uh, absolutely, if, if that's okay with you. Uh, Councillor Labarge, your microphone. Right now, my feelings 
here we have the sponsor and apparently when he designed it he went you made a suggestion to him about adding on unrestricted correct is that how it happened yes which he, he accepted suggested that counselor so he did do that and then tonight we are hearing that he'd like to talk about this and no matter what counselor dub said that you would not mind either which way if it stayed there or if it was removed i'd like to hear it from you well i would i think that personally it would be stronger if it was removed however you know i also want to see this resolution pass so i'm 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 trying to listen to my other counselors and, and see what they think i appreciate that very much and to me that's important because he's been working on this with many people okay of designing this resolution and hearing tonight from counselor miori and hearing from counselor um, elkins i just think it's very valuable that he's been working with everybody here and hearing right now he is saying to him and the people that he's worked with that he feels that it should be removed un unrestricted counselor thank you counselor clemmer yeah, I, just had a I had a question for counselor elkins could you repeat what you said um biden on november 13th some um and i'll tell you where i um i Uh, on on October 13th, uh, Axios reported that Washington had sent a letter to Israel containing uh, um, to improve humanitarian conditions in Palestinian uh, in in Palestine um, within 30 days or risk a holdup in the supply of U.S. weapons. On October 15th, the White House confirmed the contents of the letter, um, and. Uh, a U.S. official told Axios that if, if Jerusalem fails to meet the demands by November 13th, military, military assistance could be s suspended, a step the Biden administration has not taken, but which is gathering more support in the State Department. I am not saying that this is, uh, this, you know, this is diplomatic speak. I get it. Um, uh, st State Department sleep, but I, but I am, I would say that it's been, it's being reported that, mm -hmm. that the Biden administration is moving to, um, uh, to something that its State Department is, uh, mo mo you know, pushing toward um, in terms of following the law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, I think I would feel more comfortable with this if maybe reworking it a little bit and adding that to it and bringing it back in the next meeting um, and also making a decision about unrestricted, um, about that paragraph, um, and then I'd be happy to support it. Uh, Councillor Rothenberg, then Councillor Dubbs. <clears throat> so part of what you all have opened my mind to that I've been trying to consider is this idea that we can be your voice on matters of foreign affairs. Because I have to tell you, I spend way too many hours a week working on the municipal stuff and trying to understand it, right? Trying to make sure I really have my my head wrapped around it so that I can advocate strongly for what you all want and when you disagree on nuances that I can weave my way in and out of the real opportunities well enough to find that compromise and I feel like part of what makes the foreign policy hard is that we don't have that kind of skill set and I worry about my fellow counselors getting into the weeds too much about trying to find that compromise because I don't think that we have the expertise and I don't think that we spend our time on it and of course you all know that I want you to spend as much time as possible working on the city budget but that's beside the point I think that this resolution represents the wishes and desires of a certain portion of our population who has organized around it. I don't think that we're going to perfect it by trying to apply some kind of expertise we don't have. And I think you should just decide whether you want to lift up the voice of this population and pass it forward 
or you don't. Uh, Councillor Perry has his hand up and hasn't spoken, so if it's okay, I'm going to go to him yeah, first. Sounds, sounds great. Okay. Councillor Perry, welcome. Oh. I just want to say, oh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, uh, if you could speak up a little, that would be great. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm, I'm here in the office. Um, first, I just want to thank everybody for their public comments. I was here for all of that and it's moving. Um, you know, I, I will also state that I am wholly against genocide and the killing of children. Um, you know, we, we live in an amazing area. Uh, in Northampton, and so I'm so so proud to be here to be representing people. Um, but what I wanted to say is that much like the last time we had a resolution uh, calling for ceasefire in Gaza, I'm oh, sorry. Um, one of the reasons why I, I didn't support Dub's resolution, I supported the resolution put forward by the four councilors, was I felt that the Dub's resolution just it wasn't finished. I felt like there was not enough outreach, and um, I'm feeling very similar to that. I, I'm feeling that. Some of the voices in our community have not had a chance to be heard, um, you know, and, and that leaves me in an uncomfortable space. I wish that we could really do some outreach and make sure that everyone feels protected, everyone feels like they're heard here. Um, so that's that's just where I am as I'm grappling with this. Thank you, Councillor Dubs. Um, yeah, um, I. I I, I was going to uh, respond directly to what Councilor Clemmer said um, about ha giving it more discussion and p perhaps talking about it at a future meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I guess I, I just wanted to say that I am open to that. Um, if other councilors feel that they're not ready to vote on it tonight, um, however, if people want to vote tonight, I think we should. You know, um, I, 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 I want to see this. I, I want us to, uh, to try to make a statement if we can, you know, if, if other councillors don't feel comfortable with it, I understand. But I think that we have this opportunity in Northampton to make a statement as a council about how we feel about this, just like we've done with other issues. Um, I think th there's no reason we can't make a statement on this issue. Um, it, it affects everyone and, you know, so many people in this in this town. Um, and, and, and I, you know, I, I feel like like this is this is our opportunity we have this position we have been elected into this office to represent people and the people are telling us that they want this to happen and so i i want to see this uh, a, a resolution passed so that we can make a statement um as strong as we possibly can um and so whatever options we need to do to get there i guess i'm open to whether it means mm -hmm. delaying the vote whether it uh, means keeping the word unrestricted in there, as, although I'd like to take it out, but I would keep it in there if that means we're gonna pass the resolution. So I, I, I guess I'm just still leaving it up to other counselors to tell me what they think we should do. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor Elkins. I mean, I, I guess I just, I don't, I don't want you to write a resolution that you don't want. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, I, we, this is representative, democracy and it is a bit of a stretch to be coming in here and, and opining at all um, about something like this um, it is beyond our expertise and beyond our uh, uh, you know there's just a lot that goes into it and I also think expecting consensus expecting that we're gonna arrive at a document on this that that we all 100% um, agree on and can feel like we can um, stand behind so I don't I don't, I, I couldn't possibly reflect every view across the city. I'm at large, it's across the entire right. city. I couldn't possibly do it. And so the best that I can do is to think about what is before me. I, I do sometimes in this context try to persuade when I am trying to, you know, um, I, I, and I say it, I'm gonna try and persuade. But this is something that if you don't, if it's not the resolution you want, don't do it and I w will or won't vote for it and that's true of all of us and um, and you know so I, I don't know I think it's a little bit of a fool's errand to try and force consensus on important and uh, 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 yeah where, where there's maybe not gonna be mm -hmm. and it detracts from the very many many things we do um, agree on and uh, and values we share so that's that's where i'm at don't rewrite your 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 resolution for me i, I mm -hmm. i'll make my decision thank you did you have a hand i did but if you wanted to 
Okay. Well, I'd like to move this either toward a vote or if, if you are go wish to delay, um, you know, I would respect your, your interest in that. But otherwise, you know, I, I would entertain a motion to, to approve if, that's, if you're not interested in delay. Yeah, I would second that motion. Okay, so, uh, well, let me... Oh, you didn't here. make the motion uh, yet. I'll, um, I'll make a motion to approve uh, as written. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, the motion is on the floor to approve as written. Oh, okay. With the word, as amended, you know, with the word unrestricted in there. Now we can discuss removing it, perhaps. If so, someone could make an amendment to remove it, that's, but it, but it is now uh, made, made by... Councillor Jared, seconded by Councillor Dub, so it's on the floor for discussion. Yeah. Councillor Mayori. So now we can. Your microphone? Yeah, thank you. And so and are we restricted to just talking about removing? No. No, oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, it's on, you it's just on the floor. Move. Got it. Yep. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah I. I um, Thank you, Council Elkins. I, I hear you. I, I think it's. I think the consensus thing, I get it. Um, Put your mic. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Here's the thing, with, with this kind of crisis, there's no time to be, expertise, I mean, people are dying, there's a genocide, we, yeah. we got it, we, all the people who protested the Vietnam War, they weren't all, you know, going to school for, you know, they, they got in, they, they figured this stuff out, and they knew, you know, when they saw something wrong that was going on, and exactly. that's really the best we can do. I mean, if we let the experts, you know, kind of be the only ones who can have a conversation, I don't know, where, that, uh, you know, all of Gaza will be dead by then. I mean, we just, I, I get it. No, I think it's good to, to say it. It's good to say, yeah, hey, we're just city councilors in Northampton, we're not experts, and I I totally get it, and I appreciate the consensus um, conversation. Um, so, you know, again, I just want to reiterate that this is not like we're going to pass this and then they're going to take all of Israel's weapons. You know, you, Israel gets about 69% of its weaponry from the U.S. It's a staggering number, but that th it's they have plenty of time to pivot their behavior and still have defensive weapons. So I, right. what I'm saying is the, re the reason for this kind of thing is to actually impact behavior and the world has tried everything and is not succeeding. Yes. So I guess I don't, I didn't, you know, I have no, I am comfortable with this. I have no problem with two. I think it's illustrative. Um, but, and I, I do question um, whether more time, I'm, I'm happy, you know, we can give more time. I. Have a, my gut is that that's not going to help us, yeah. but I, you know, I think it just, it's a tough subject, it's always going to be hard, and I'm, I'm not sure um, that, you know, I, I think there's, this is the time to say something, we, we actually don't have a lot more time before we're dealing with much, you know, bigger things in our own country, so I, I mean, I'm really kind of for, as you you know, others have said, let's you know vote. Speak. But oh, sorry, Marianne. Sorry. 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 What's that last thing you said? No, I was just saying that. You know, my personal opinion is I don't think that more time is going to bring in more um, information. It does help with amendments. I, you know, we that's something we could do. But I I just I I feel like that's really not going to bring in anything more for us. But I uh, I will hear counselors who think otherwise. Mm -hmm. Is there further discussion? Okay, then um, <coughs> we're ready to vote. I uh, will take. Well, let's do a roll call, please. On sorry, the I, well, I yep. yeah. so we are leaving in unrestricted. That is currently on the I, floor. I do feel comfortable. I don't. So, so, um, it's hard for me to completely explain because I do. I don't feel uncomfortable keeping it in there. It's just that I, I did feel like it was a little stronger and clearer without the word. However, um, like if I could, you know, I, I'm just trying to explain that I, I know how everybody feels and it's a tough subject but so if we were to use the word unrestricted it would mean that all future weapon sales would be restricted to comply with US and international law so I'm not uh, uncomfortable with that language I'm, I'm okay with leaving that in there I know other people aren't um, uh, but if it means that we're gonna be able to make a statement on this I think we should w leave the word in there if other people 
feel that it needs to be there. So you want to leave the unscripted? Yeah, I, I feel comfortable with that. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Then are we ready to vote? Okay. Roll call, please. Councilor Jarek. Yes. Councilor Clumber. Abstain. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Mayori. Yes. Councilor Moulton. Yes. Councilor Perry. Abstain. Councilor Rothenberg. Abstain. Councilor Dubs. Yes. And Councilor Elkins. Abstain. Okay. Five. Uh, the the <clears throat> motion carries. It is approved with five yes votes and four abstentions. Okay, we will move on to. Thank you, everyone. I the four. Yeah. We'll move on to. Um, 24.159, in order to establish a tax classification for fiscal year 2025. We'll wait a couple minutes just for folks to go out. Listen to the people. You had you wanted unscripted. Thank you, uh, Principal Assessor, for staying. <laughs> Happy to have you still with us. That's why I left it up to you and how you felt. Uh, if councilors have questions, so we'll we'll uh, take a look at the order, and then um, this is on first reading. So the order twenty four point one five nine, an order to establish a tax classification for fiscal year twenty twenty five ordered that the Northampton City Council approves a residential factor of one for fiscal year 2025. And we've already heard a presentation on this. Um, our, yes, it's for this right, yeah. current fiscal year, <laughs> which is kind of odd because it's already begun, <laughs> but we're, you know, part way through is when we set the tax rate. Right. <sighs> uh, so are there questions? Councillor Rothenberg. I have a question. I think I heard through the grapevine that uh, former Councillor David Murphy is not a fan of this. Does anybody happen to know, or can they summarize his position? I think he's actually not joined Oh, could we recognize him? Yep, he's he's on the board of assessors, so he is. Um, I would move to. Would you make him a co-host, please? I'm just curious. What's going on yeah. now? David Murphy? Yeah. Welcome, David. Good evening, counselors. Oh, good. Great. So the question is, um, and uh, you know, you are uh, the board, of, you are on the board of assessors? Yeah, I'm the chairman of the board. <coughs> Chair of the board of assessors. Um, and so Councilor Rothenberg had a question as to your opinion on what, how, on the sp uh, tax rate and the single tax rate. I very much support uh, factor of one. Excellent. Thank you so much. I don't have any other questions because that made sense to me too and you're the only person I thought might be opposed or know something different than the rest of us. <laughs> Councillor Labarge. Yes. Hi, David. Thank you for being here. Um, we've heard the assessor, Mark, talking about the COVID and what was happening within that period of time with the businesses and you know that too, David. My question is that, which I had mentioned here at City Council, was the danger of what would happen if we separated right now, if we went into Sorry, could you close the door, one, we separated. It's hard to hear. Sorry, Counselor. What would happen, especially right now, when we're starting construction going on in the city? To me, I feel that would be a wrong way to go, that we need to stay with factor one. I look at it as a danger signal here to me to do this would be the wrong way to go, especially 
you being on the board for quite a long time, knowing about factor one and commercial right down the line. So that is my feelings about this, that it is critical that we keep it at factor one because of all the movement that is occurring here with construction, which we need now, because we lost a lot of construction in the city, businesses also. Mm -hmm. So can you- I agree with, can you I agree with you, Counselor. Right. Yes, because uh, COVID put a lot of stress on, particularly downtown on commercial property values. It hurt the businesses, it hurt the commercial property values. And we're going to do a great deal of construction downtown for the next couple of years. That's going to put additional stress exactly. on the value of the commercial properties downtown. And changing the factor uh, and splitting the tax rate is going to put additional pressure on top of that on the values of those properties. Um, when, you, when you increase their taxes, you lower their value, which lowers your tax yield on those properties. It, it's a loop that you almost can't stop once you start it. So I very much support the factor of one. Thank you very much, David. Are there other questions for uh, David Murphy or Mark Dottrell? Okay, so we have um, <clears throat> the option of referring this to the consent agenda of our next meeting or referring it to finance. I move consent agenda. Is there a second? Second it. So okay, motion no, made by Councillor Elkins and seconded by Councillor Abarge. I second that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Just to That's refer fine. this to the consent agenda of our next meeting, and of course, at that time, we can move it uh, off of the consent agenda if we wish to, or we can pull it from the consent agenda and discuss it further if, if we wish to at that time. Um, I will just add, you know, pers you know, I agree the residential factor of one um, makes sense for the reasons that the that, um, Assessor Chair Murphy outlined and others have outlined. Um, I do still, I have concern as I, I express every year about uh, the impact of our, of taxes on certain, certain members of the population who are in, uh, on, can find it very challenging, and we, we certainly look at all of the exemptions, and we have granted almost all of the exem exemptions that we uh, are allowed to by state law. Um, and I, I'm continuing to think about uh, both, are there exemptions that we should c consider um, further, and also uh, talk with my state representatives about, you know, how, how can we address the concern, the the folks who are very low income have a house, usually not a fancy house, um, but the, those values have risen so much that um, it's, it can be a great challenge for them. Yeah. Um, so the motion on the floor is to refer to the consent agenda. If there's no further discussion, we will uh, take a roll call vote on that. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. Councillor Dubbs. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. And Councillor Jarrett. Yes. So that passes unanimously. It will be on the consent agenda of our next meeting. Thank you very much, David Murphy. Yes. Thank you, David Murphy. Thank you, Mark. Yes. You could go home. <laughs> okay, it brings us to our second financial order on first reading, um, 24.162, in order to reprogram funds to purchase NHS dishwasher. And would someone from the mayor's office like to speak to this? Good evening, thank you. Um, so this is, uh, if you'll remember, last year we voted $60,000 for, um, for the dishwasher and they put it out, well, they actually got three quotes off of the state bid. Um, the lowest bid is $90,376, so we are short $30,000. So the school um, business administrator has put together um, two other accounts that are listed as um, Northampton High School kitchen equipment. 
so that can be used to put towards this um, purchase but there was another account that I'm asking you to reprogram so that they can use the six thousand dollars towards um, purchasing the dishwasher thank you yeah and that amount is six thousand nine hundred fifty eight dollars thirty cents from the JFK Cafeteria Freezer Project to the Northampton High School <laughs> dishwasher account. Questions? Councilor Rothenberg. Did this start as a $20,000 dishwasher, and when was that? It was 60000 It started at sixty, yeah. and when was that? Um, I believe it was last year, 2024. Okay. 2020, uh, no, I stand corrected, 2025. Okay, thank you. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to note, I actually have to leave. My husband had a surgery this week, and I'm on duty to go take over oh. care. So mm -hmm. thank you. Um, is there a motion to I would bring this, put, refer this to the consent agenda or to finance? Move to the consent agenda. Move to the consent agenda. Uh, second. <laughs> All right. <laughs> motion made by <laughs> Councillor Labarge and seconded by Councillor Moulton to refer Where this to the consent agenda. I have to go to my husband. Um, and um, okay. is there any discussion? Okay. Thanks. Um, best wishes, Councillor Rothenberg. And Thanks for helping me with that. Okay. Uh, roll call, please, on referral to consent agenda. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg, on your way out, do you want to wave? <laughs> <laughs> she was able to throw that phone in. <laughs> Councillor Dubs. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. And Councillor Clemmer. Yes. Okay, that passes with eight yes votes. Um, now that brings us to, and will appear on the consent agenda of our next meeting. Now we come to zoning ordinances. This is a zoning ordinance that is not yet referred, and uh, thank uh, Planning Director Carolyn Mish for staying with us. Um, <clears throat> 24.161, an ordinance to amend multiple sections of the zoning ordinance to remove site plan review process for two family units. And uh, if you could just give us a brief introduction, and the, you know this will be referred to uh, the planning board and legislati legislative matters for a much deeper discussion. But if anyone has any questions, um, we could talk about it now. Um, good evening. So the ordinance in front of you um, is um, recommended as it's shown by both the planning board and the mayor. The planning board has been looking for these this modification for a while now. Um, the original the reason that two family units in some districts um, were um, um, established to go through site plan review was simply to primarily and simply to ensure that there would be an ability to um, require fossil fuel free construction for those second units and the only way that the zoning could really address um, what's um, typically standard building code items is if it were considered an incentive or an additional unit that's being built um, and otherwise zoning can't dictate what kinds of building materials or systems are used within um, a structure so um, at this point um, well a couple things have changed and um, not only do we have the opt-in specialized stretch code, which makes it more expensive to build units that um, um, have dual fuel, so are, um, have perhaps propane, um, but then are, um, have conduit for electric to convert to all electric in the future. Um, so that's one thing that has been um, implemented in the interim, you know, just in the last, I guess it started Jan January 1, um, so it's almost a year now. Um, and then the other piece is, of course, that we are now a pilot program in the state's fossil fuel free um, um, designation. So. 
Um, there's a process, of course, to sort of implement that piece, but essentially the um, guardrails that were established through the site plan are no longer necessary um, to incentivize or to ensure that we are building or um, approving projects that are fossil fuel free. And so removing the site plan removes an impediment for um, people, applicants to come forward um, to build um, second units. And so this is really small scale stuff. You know, it's one additional unit on a single family home. And so the site plan process does create a barrier um, and a burden to applicants who are, who are um, would not otherwise need to come, you know, need additional permits. Any other questions? Councilor Mayori. Are there uh, costs um, connected to the site plan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, you have to put together plan sets um, showing your layout of the property, so that's a cost for an applicant. There's a filing fee um, for processing and reviewing. Um, there's a recording fee at the Registry of Deeds. And then a time. So we, usually, we tell people it takes, um, you know, between um, um, six to ten weeks. To, mm -hmm. It basically adds to the process. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Council Barge, yes. your microphone. Thank you. Anyways, I know all about the plot plans. I know about the surveying. I know about the septic systems and that. And, but you forgot a couple of things. Okay. The work and the cost, okay? They're not cheap, period. That's why you will see engineers, surveyors, they don't come in with one plan. They already have another one set down there. And then another one, just in case the planning board will say, well, you need to, I would highly recommend you do this and do that, mm -hmm. bingo, there it is, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, there is the cost of d plan development. Yep. That's right. Now, also, too, with this, we're looking at, say, flag lots. Say a flag lot. Does this have anything to do with flag lots? Because my question is, reading up on some of, of what's occurring here, say that even with a flag lot, you've got one house going up, mm -hmm. and that could be any size at that point. But then you want to add another one. Does that one only have to be 1,800? Um, so that provision is still in, um, because the, so there's a distinction in the um, rural residential and suburban residential, and I guess water supply protection as well, that if the second unit, if both units are over a certain size, that's a special permit, not right. site plan. That's not part of this review. but. On flag lots, um, you are allowed a second unit. So in addition to a single family, you could also get a second unit, but this would eliminate the site plan review for that. And, and just um, as a reminder, the other piece that's already wrapped into the zoning it are very specific design criteria for that second unit. Those won't change. Um, the um, applicants would still need to meet those if they wanted a... Um, an adjustment or to uh, provide a different way of meeting the, some of the criteria in that design section, um, that would trigger a site plan. But if you're just going to file an application and meet all of those standards, you, th this uh, proposal would allow you to just go straight through to building permit. Um, I have a uh, raising, calling on myself. Um, <laughs> uh, so, in y URB or URC, you know, three families are allowed uh, by right. Um, so if you already have a duplex on a lot, that it, you, you could add an attached structure without, um, without site plan, right? But if you detach it, even with these changes, you still need site plan. Yes. And is that was that in, is that intentional? I mean, is there is there a reason um, that that you know existing duplexes that are connected, uh, you would you would want a site plan for a an, a, a, a detached structure? Um, so, because this would only affect urban residential 
B and C, where three units might be allowed depending on the lot size. Um, we didn't, this ordinance isn't addressing that. It really was meant to address the two family by right um, standard. Mm -hmm. So that may be something that might be grounds for discussion, but it was really targeted to um, the two family um, allowances. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Councilor Moulton. So, bottom line, uh, we this would streamline the process both in terms of cost and time. Mm -hmm. And but the one remaining guardrail, so to speak, is that these applications would still have to meet the form-based criteria. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Can you give an example of what that form-based criteria <laughs> is? Sure. So um, it relates to the um, relationship of the structure to the street. Um, in most cases, that sort of generally is about um, the design of the units that are along the street um, and also where the parking is located, so not in front of structures but to the side. Um, also there, if there are, depending on the size of the structure, um, you need to uh, break up facades if it's a really long facade with um, windows at um, certain intervals. So those are a few examples of what are in the okay, th th design. Okay, thank you. Term. That's helpful. Uh, and I think that that the incentive uh, for meeting those criteria is you're saving yourself exactly. time and money. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? No. I uh, would entertain a motion for referral to the Planning Board and Legislative Matters. So moved. Second. second. Uh, motion made by Councillor Elkins, and I'll give that second to Councillor <laughs> Uh Any discussion on referral? <laughs> they say just like Maybe that. next time, Councillor Okay. <laughs> Roll call, please, on referral. Okay. Oh. Councillor Maori. You can have it. Yes. yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Dubbs. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Clemmer. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Hey, Councillor Labarge, yes. Okay. I didn't hear my name. Okay. That has been referred to um, Planning Board and Legislative Matters. And do we have an idea yet of uh, when that might be? Do we talk? <laughs> uh, we have not talked. Uh, we in our regular schedule finally. In when's the next planning board? Planning board, it would be December 12th, would be the earliest. Um, at least okay, so it's going to be a little while. On our yeah. we'll just, you'll decide whether we're doing we'll a joint space. meeting or separate. <laughs> yes. Watch the space. We will, we, will, we will get it scheduled and get it announced. Okay, great. Um, Next uh, is a zoning ordinance in second reading, 24.152, an ordinance to rezone eight general industrial and three office industrial parcels in Florence. And uh, would you like me to speak to this first, or, or would you like to speak to it? Um, either one. It, you know, it's in your ward, so um, I'd be happy to answer any other questions beyond you have. This yeah. is second reading, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, well, I'm co-sponsoring this with the Planning and Sustainability and the Mayor. And um, <clears throat> this brings, there's several residential parcels that are currently zoned general industrial or office industrial. We are proposing to <coughs> move those to uh, residential, which would allow them to, you know, make changes um, to their houses without having to go through a Zoning Board of Appeals process and um, then to take several properties that are in the general industrial district and move that to office industrial. And one of the things that that, it adds more flexibility, including the ability to have housing uh, on the second floor or higher. And um, there's interest among the owners of, of some of these properties to, to build housing, to redevelop. Um, so I think enabling that would be a positive direction. We've heard, uh, we heard at the public hearing from uh, many nearby residents. Um, they were supportive. Many wanted a more restrictive land use. Uh, housing or a park was a common theme. Um, but I know, and maybe you can comment on, the, on this too, but you know, there's there's a need for the office industrial type of space in town. That 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 
um, <coughs> the you know, having having a space where people can do lighter industrial uses um, is important, and 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 office space and um, these area. I think it's important to keep uh, these areas to to allow for that um, housing. Is, would be allowed. Um, I suppose a park would be allowed, although it would be ex expensive use of, of the property. Yeah, I mean, I think the other piece, uh, the other um, issue with, in particular, the large bichem property, um, which this would enable to have more flexible uses, um, is that it's uh, substantially built out um, with structures and pavement, and so. Um, converting entirely to residential um, is probably might not match the market so well <laughs> um, even if people wished it would convert completely to, to residential in addition to the fact that you know we need to keep space for um, the sort of light industrial uses in the city. Any other comments or questions? This received uh, a positive recommendation from both planning board and legislative matters. Um, just to thank thank you and and your co-sponsors for kind of looking kind of proactively and just really kind of thinking about the ways we can make um, you know the city more efficient, more accessible, and and you know and more uh, more. F and and more housing actually so thank you yeah and you know folks in the neighborhood are thrilled that by chem has ceased operation you know, about a couple of years ago we had a formaldehyde spill there have been numerous violations um, and that, that there will be a, a redevelopment and a change that better fits the neighborhood um Hi. Councilor I was going to report that, that when we gave the positive recommendation, we got a round of applause, which doesn't happen often in chambers. So uh, <laughs> the neighbors were very uh, glad to, 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 to see the, the changed use and <laughs> so forth. I would move to approve. I will second. Uh, motion made by Councilor Elkins, seconded by Councilor Jarrett. <laughs> Any further discussion? Okay, roll call please on approval. Okay. Councilor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Dobbs. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Clemmer. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. And Councillor Maori. Yes. Okay, that passes unanimously. And we've come to our last item on the agenda. 24.160, a resolution opposing expansion of the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School. This is in first reading and uh, recommended by Councillor Marissa Elkins, Alex Jarrett, and Deborah Klemmer. Um, and uh, would one of us like to begin uh, reading it? Uh, I'll go first. Great. <laughs> Uh, so, um, yeah, you're sharing it. Great, thank you. Oh, Laura's sharing it. Uh, so, whereas, uh, so, sorry, a history of opposition in Northampton. Whereas the Hadley based Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School, PVCICS, failed in 2016 and again in 2019 to obtain a charter amendment from the Massachusetts Board of Elementary and Secondary Education that would have permitted it to increase uh, its maximum enrollment and Whereas PVCICS is again seeking authorization from the board asking to expand its maximum enrollment from 584 to 684 K through 12 students, despite public testimony from current PVCICS caregivers that the school is not meeting the needs of its current student enrollment. And whereas the Northampton City Council in September 2016 voted unanimously to approve a resolution opposing lifting the cap of Commonwealth Charter Schools and in November 2018 a resolution opposing expansion of the Pioneer Chinese, Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School and somebody. I can go. Okay. Um, whereas Northampton School Committee opposed expansion of PVCICS in 2017 and will formally vote again on PVCICS's current request at their November 14th, 2024 meeting. And whereas in November 2016, the last time 
charter school expansion expansions were on the ballot statewide. Massachusetts voted opposing lifting the cap on Commonwealth charter schools by a margin of 62 to 38 percent, with the voters of Northampton opposed by a margin of 72 percent to 28 percent, and all of Hampshire County opposed by a margin of 74 percent to 26 and a half percent. A threat to the stability of Northampton public schools and students. And whereas in the 23-24 school year, enrollment in NPS was 2,495 students, with 21.8% of these students with disabilities, 42.8% high needs, and 31.5% low income. PVCICS's enrollment was 552 students with 15% students with disabilities, 32.1% high needs, and 20.5% low income. And whereas in the years since PVCICS last requested to expand its enrollment, Northampton has been forced to divert 2.3 million fiscal year 17, 2.5 million in 18, 2.6 million in 19, 2.3 million in 20, 2.5 million in 21, 2.8 million in 22, 2.6 million in 23, 2.9 million in 24, and 3.0 million. Uh, 0 0.0 million um, in fiscal year 25 for a total of $23.5 million away from Northampton schools to six nearby Commonwealth charter schools to support an average of 190 students per year. And whereas Northampton Public Schools is paying $733,832 in fiscal year 2025 for 44 Northampton students attending PVCICS, and these numbers will likely increase if the requested PVCICS expansion were granted by the State Board. And Whereas the impact of funds diverted to charter schools and on the budgets of Northampton Public Schools and the City of Northampton's general budget is substantial, representing 7.2% of the Northampton Public Schools operating budget and 2.4% of the City's entire operating budget, and whereas funds diverted to charter schools from Northampton Public Schools have played a significant role in an ongoing budget crisis in Northampton in which Northampton schools were forced to eliminate 21 position in our schools despite an 8% increase in funding from the city, the largest increase in at least 30 years, and undermining uh, democratic processes and a lack of state remedies. And whereas charter schools in the Commonwealth are privately run and are not democratically accountable yet are publicly funded by taxpayers, when dollars are diverted from local school district, fund, school district funds and whereas despite strenuous advocacy over many years by Northampton's representatives in the state legislature, Senator Joe Comerford and Representative Lindsay Sabadosa, local elected leaders, students, teachers and administrators, caretakers and an untold number of other stakeholders to address the flawed Chapter 70 state funding formula, the formula remains unchanged and underfunded and whereas the flawed funding formula has resulted um, resulted in Northampton receiving only a 13.1% increase in state funding for public education in 15 years, which adjusted for inflation is effectively a 29.1% decrease in state funding for Northampton schools. And whereas even Senator Comerford's attempted attempt during the fiscal year 2025 legislative budget sessions to create a task force to merely study and make recommendations for updating the calculation of required local contributions as defined in section two of chapter 70 of the general laws died in the legislature and whereas the inequity of the charter school funding system now sows unnecessary tension creates competition rather than fostering co cooperation and undermines democratic processes in the communities across the Commonwealth and now therefore it be resolved that the Northampton City Council join with the Northampton School Committee and Mayor Gina Lee Louise Shera in calling on the Commonwealth's Board of Elementary and Secondary Education to reject the proposed expansion of enrollment at the Pioneer Valley Chinese Emergent Charter School and be it further resolved that the City Council President is authorized to submit a letter to the Massachusetts Board of Elementary and Secondary Education and to speak with the Board Chair to express this body's strong opposition to any expansion of PVCICS, as well as this body's opposition to the addition of any new charter school seats until the charter school funding formula is fundamentally reformed. 
and be it further resolved that Northampton's representatives in the state legislature are encouraged to redouble their efforts to achieve fundamental reforms leading to more equitable and expanded funding of the Commonwealth's public schools. Uh, would anyone like to lead us off? I'll go. Councillor Elkins. Um, yes, thank you. I want to, um, uh, first of all, thank you, Councillor Clemmer and Councillor Jarrett for, uh, uh, for working together on this. Um, this was uh, received from a, f a few, f a couple of former councillors, Councillor um, Bid uh, Bidwell, former council bidwell and um uh uh we also looked we looked up the the former the past resolutions that um had been sponsored by uh mayor shiara back when she was still on council and dennis bidwell i think jim nash also um co-sponsored those um and you know so there's just been you know this has just been a real struggle and um and seeing these dollars leave our school system every year to a greater, you know, to a, it's a bigger number every single year, um, and it has uh, just a devastating effect on our school budgets. And uh, so we keep saying it. We keep saying to our legislators, and we keep saying to Boston, please fix this. And um, and so what we tried to do with this was to, you know, dig into the real numbers, talk about the actual enrollment, talk about the um, the impact over time. And um, and the difficulties it's created in the city. So, well, I'm, I'm looking. For, hopeful we'll be sending this to Boston very soon. Thank you, Councilor Clemmer. And another, um, and thank both of you too for working on this um, together. And um, another thing um, that came up working on this and we have in the resolution is that they get to the charter schools get to pick which students they want. So they take. Uh, Northampton public schools have more students with higher needs than the charter schools do, which costs more money to um, give them the, uh, this, the extra services they need. And um, that's Northampton public schools take a bigger hit because of that also. And um, so, uh, you know, that, that also um, is more resources for Northampton to provide all this help for the students. Thanks. Um, I just want to uh, correct there. I d don't think the, char the charter schools don't get to choose which students they want, but uh, the effect of, say, transportation issues or uh, you know other issues of what 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 what's um, <coughs> possible. What, you know, what people may not choose those schools if. Give in, in certain circumstances, um, and so as we can see in the numbers, the need the the special needs and low income are, are less uh, because yeah, of the structural Northampton issues. Public school, more of those children wind up in the Northampton Public Schools. Right. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, thanks to my sponsors and uh, to the past counselors who who sp uh, sponsored these. You know, this this current system is not workable. We can't afford any expansions until major changes are made to this funding system. There are other frameworks that allow innovation and education that we could look at um, that, that would not be a drain. <coughs> and um, I've, re I've received some feedback. This is in first reading. And I've received some feedback. Apparently, there is more accurate um, percentage data about special needs students uh, in um, because, and Desi will be uh, updating that soon on the website, but we'll, we'll check with school, school um, department folks to try to make sure we have the most updated numbers for, um, for last year. And um, <coughs> we're open to, to uh, receiving comments and we'll um, you know, consider them and, and bring them to the next, uh, next meeting where, where we'll actually be voting on it. So if you have comments, uh, please send them to us. Councilor Lavarge, yes, um, your microphone. Well, thank you. <laughs> we do have um, a woman out here who's had her hand up about this ordinance. I think she wanted to talk. So. Yes, yeah, not a time for public comment now, but we welcome your comments, um, you know, di directly to us and and to speak uh, at the next meeting as well. 
Great. Thank you. Any other uh, comments now? Yeah, I just want to thank the sponsors as well. I mean, we it's, <clears throat> there's been other resolutions about um, th this expansion, and every time it comes up, we've got to you know we've got to show up. I'm I'm, I'm glad that you um, mm -hmm. you know I appreciate that you're doing this and that there's a kind of a, a sounds like a really organized uh, state effort. Uh, I mean, I just it's amazing to me that the the inequitable funding formula is just in tr like just stays. No matter how many people, you know, bring it up, it's wild. So I think we and the thing to do is to keep, you know, you got to be the squeaky wheels on that one. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to support this, except I do take, I do think that, um, let's see, um, two things, let's see. I, I, I take issue with force to eliminate 21 positions. I understand that there were tough positions. I mean, there's tough decisions to be made. I just think it disempowers the, our, our elected. So we were not forced to do things. We we're actually in this position to make tough decisions. You could think it's the right decision, or you can think it's the wrong decision. But um, to say that we're forced to eliminate a very specific amount of positions, um, I'm, I'm not really okay with that. If there, maybe there's another way to say it. Um, I certainly think it's significantly, you know, mm -hmm. I, I agree with everything else you said about how it impacts the budget, but I take issue with that. Um, you know, we're here to make decisions. We're not forced. Um, we had other choices, and they might have been terrible choices, or some people might think, but um, I think it, we need to, you know, we're elected. We got to, you know, we got to take some accountability here that we're actually making exactly. decisions. You can't say we make decisions and say we're being forced if they're not it's not compatible so that's one thing and I just remember something about the eight percent and I, I'm gonna have to go by next time we'll um, I know some people took issue with that number and I just don't you know I'm well I'm gonna think about that but um, but generally I think I'm very happy to see this here and I, I'm really hoping that we can move the dial hey it could happen I know thank You're you right. Thank you. Um, and we'll consider those suggestions. Thank you. Councilor LaBarge. Thank you. Um, if you look at what the language is on here, I remember, and you were not a counselor at large at all, about Dennis Bidwell, him working tirelessly on this. And we just did the one on the Chapter 70. And then the school committee also passed it, the same one, Dubs I in Rothenburg. We had uh, Meg Robbins and a whole bunch of us helping with that. Here we are, again, again. You know, it's like, what is it gonna take? What is it gonna take for them in Boston to realize, stop it, we need the money. Put the money where it belongs here. Because we're got the mayors, no matter who the mayor is gonna be, Okay, it's going to have a problem again, again and again, and we're going to see our community falling apart again. People so upset, losing jobs right down the line. Something's got to happen here. I recall, and I think Councilor Mayor, I think you did too, sign that petition that was going around, right, from, I think, Senator Comperford, Lindsay Sabadosa, right? And it's like, how? what is it going to take? And, you know, I'm getting calls, and you probably are too, counselors, about this so-called certification money coming in, $628 million, something like that, right? And it's like, they're asking, well, can we get the $3 million out of it? I said, the mayor can't speak about it right now. We don't have it, and we don't know it's probably not going to come to the end of November. So here's we go every time some money is being put in the paper. Right away, you're going to get your phone calls. I've been getting them. I've been getting emails also. So we have a problem. I don't know what it's going to take for them in Boston to do something about this because Right now, we get so many parents upset. Yes, charter schools are a biggie, a biggie. 
you have, and I'm being asked, like, how many counselors have their children in charters? That's your right. That's your right to make a choice where you want your children to go. You look at the price at 733000 for how many students? 44 students, right? You're going to see it go lower. It's going to happen. It's going to happen, and I can see why. Big classrooms, it, the teachers are all getting stressed out. It, I don't know. Uh, counselors, we need help here. What is it going to take for them to realize in Boston that the mayors and all of us need that money for the school department? Thank you. It's right up to your head. It's, it's ridiculous. Thank you. Any other comments? Councilor Moulton. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Um, thanks to uh, Councilors Elkins, Jarrett, and Clemmer for uh, continuing uh, this city council and its predecessors' opposition to uh, expanding the, uh, the, the Chinese Emerging Charter School. Uh, I think that's important. It's also important um, to, to note that the, the last clause in the second to last paragraph uh, states, uh, if I'm reading it correctly, states our opposition to the addition of any new charter school seats anywhere in the state uh, until the charter school funding formula is fundamentally reformed. So that's, that's, that's an even broader statement, and I, I'm glad to see it there. Um, and re regarding uh, Councillor Maori's point on that particular paragraph about the uh, ongoing budget crisis in Northampton. I think I, I would I would look to tighten that language a little bit. Um, there's rep repetition, Northampton and schools, and perhaps just uh, refer to uh, the ongoing budget crisis in Northampton, resulting in the North in the school department eliminating 21 positions and getting rid of that word forced. I I I, I, I understand uh, Councilor Mayor's point on that. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Any other comments in first reading? Okay, seeing none, we will take this up in two weeks. And that brings us to the end of our agenda. I, I think I made a bet or that it was going to be 9.30. I was totally wrong. Um, you needed so, to leave that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd entertain a motion oh, to adjourn. I move to adjourn. To adjourn. Okay, motion made by Councillor Elkins, and oh. I'm going to give the second okay. to Councillor Perry. There's a delay. Yes. Um, and <laughs> roll call, please, on adjournment. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Dubbs. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Clemmer. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. 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 Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Bolton. Yes. Okay, we are adjourned.